are watching Leicester Till I Die TV. Afternoon, good evening, good day, wherever you are in the world. Hello. No, it's not Chris, although he might be somewhere lurking around. It is, of course, Brad, and this is the home of LTID TV2. And as you can see at the bottom of your screen there, this is the home of all things LCFC women's football and WSL. Yes, we are back. We promised you we've been promoting it enough, but we are officially back and underway. And of course, better time to do it an international break. Hmm. Anyone watch that boring? No, I didn't ever. I'm glad you're here, though. I'm glad you're here. See some proper football. See how it's properly supposed to be done. ATL well. See if the women can show you how to cross a football. How are we all anyway? I hope you're all well. We, of course, all are here. If you're all here, you know why you're here. It's because Leicester are playing. Of course, it is. It is Leicester City versus Brighton and Albion women. And it's an interesting game. The last time these two met last season, it was a six-pointer for the Battle of the Relegation Zone. Not quite so much this side. We have got some team news, which will be scrolling across the bottom uh, shortly, once I introduce my guest. But if you could just be an absolute legend, this, this channel is going to be coming back stronger than ever. It's not just going to be the home of uh, Leicester women. It is also going to be the home of the quiz channel. We've got a Leicester City quiz coming. So if you could do what it's saying there at the bottom and help this channel out massively, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, give it a share, give your mates a nudge, tell them to put it on the phone and get clicking that notification bell. All your support is welcome. Now. Without further ado, whilst I click this lovely button, I bring in the man, the myth, the legend, the hostess with the mostest, although today he is a co-host. It is, of course, Chris. Chris, how the devil are we, mate? Hello, Chris. How are you? I know. Two Chrises <laughs> in one show. Um, Chris, you're obviously a bit new to the women's game. We've, we we found you as a fan in here. You you you've picked out a favourite as well. You've already told me your favourite. She's already got the restraining order in. <laughs> no, well, yes. Let's not go there. <laughs> oh well, well we've gone there now. We've we're, we're already going to go there, Chris. I mean, Chris, it's great to have you on here. First of all, you know, you obviously LTR TV one, the man who's given me this free reign for this channel. Well, not free reign, but he's given me. Give me the permission to start this channel and start doing it. He's regretting it ever since, he says. But <laughs> in all seriousness, Chris, women's football is a part of the game now in, in, in a big structure throughout. It, it, it's taking off. It's starting to, you know, the tracks are starting to traction because I can make up words and sentences. Um, but, um, I mean, it, it, it's going well for Leicester, isn't it? I mean, I've you've only known really what I tell you from out when you ask about it, but... Compared to last season, Leicester are in a better place than they were. Yes, we um, most definitely. I mean, I got into the women's game um, with obviously with the Euros, and um, it, it I just enjoyed it. It was so much so refreshing to see, um, and the women. Without wanting this to sound funny, women footballers are so much more approachable when you look at what they do on you know, Instagram and TikTok and all that, they seem to be all about having a laugh and enjoying the game. And we don't seem to have enough of that. Um, yeah. But look, you know, last two seasons, 
Well, we're in the Premier League, which is something the men can't do at the moment. Um, we managed to stay up the last two seasons by not coming bottom, because obviously the 12th team go 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 down. Uh, we're not in that position this year. It started off, I mean, at the start of the season, we were top. I think you're like, hello. Um, but obviously, we, we, it's kind of settled. Um, if you'd have given us, well, we're eighth at the moment. If you'd given us that at the start of the season, we'd have taken it. So, yeah, fair play to them. They are doing very well. Yeah, yeah. And and, and a lot of people, those that are diehard fans of the game, will know that there is still a few players that are from the time when Leicester used to be kicking it around on a park, mate. There was a university side they were playing, Leicester City University. And some of them are still here. Have come up through that grassroots, but the influx of talent, and, and this is what you need to do, and it just shows you that realistically there's not much difference between the WSL and the greedy, greedy pigs of the Premier League, because um, uh, because you know Leicester haven't really had to spend big, but if you watch my transfer show that I did with Jack from the, um, I always call it the full time whistle, but it's the final whistle, isn't it? That's his part. That's yes. the final whistle. Uh, you'll see that we did an ins and outs on the transfers and there was a hell of a lot of players gone. Uh, a lot of fan favourites were let go and it seemed very callous, but they brought in a hell of a lot, a, 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 a massive amount of players to overturn, which you have to do. You let that many go, you've got to replace them. But it was the quality of what they've brought in. Internationals that over the breaks, Chris, have gone and scored for their country, have got back into their international side. You know, yeah. so... Shows you, and that's probably what's helped Leicester now. You know, the third season are a bit more stable, they're a bit more attractive as a side because it's like, well, you've earned your, you've earned your, you know, your bit in this division a little bit. You've not just stayed up and, you know, gone there. You've, you've stayed up twice and, and improved each season. So that's, that's how it goes. I just want to say quickly hi to the few of you that are in. It's great to see you. Nate says, good, good morning, Brad. Uh, and Doug, Doug, doing a Leicester, are we, Doug? I haven't yet posted it in there. I'm torturing him by post, not posting the group, but he might be doing a Leicester in real life in the predictions league. And then, of course, what well, good old Nate. He, good, good old. We don't talk about it. We don't. We don't. We don't mention it. It's like it's what like. What did you do with me? What did you do with me, dog? I think you're wonderful. No, no, no. It wasn't. <laughs> I definitely. I I even did the maths twice just to try and find out. Uh, he does say obviously hi to you uh, and and um, and to Doug as well, Nate. And then Chris just. Hello from Chris. All right. she, you do your little Mrs. Doubtfire. Hello, I thought I'd give you that. <laughs> but you know, Chris, like you said, these these two teams are very close in the league. There's literally there's two points separating them. Leicester in eighth on sixteen, uh, Brighton in tenth on fourteen. But the biggest part, Chris, and maybe for people that don't understand how, how the, the difference between like the WSL and the Premier League is, there's only twelve teams and one relegation spot, isn't it, Chris? So. Bristol City in sixth, uh, on six points, sorry, in 12, which is the last spot in the WSL, having that 10 point lead is far contrast to how they were last time out. I think last time out, Chris, we actually beat Brighton to secure our safety in the mm. division with, with, with a, a game to go. And I, I, I even think last the season before that, we actually beat them to secure our safety on the final game of the season. Um, so we've got a bit of history with these. It's nice to probably play them in a bit more of a relaxed environment, if you will. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think if you took Bristol City out of the mix, it would be a lot tighter <laughs> at the bottom. Um, they, they, they are doing a, a Sheffield United, aren't they, um, for the yes. Women's League? Uh, and now, look, I, I, I don't have any trouble whatsoever with Bristol City being there. You know, I have seen a few comments saying, like, you know, you know what they're doing in the top league, blah blah blah. Look, they've earned the right to be there. Yeah. Um, and I don't care who you are, where you come from, you know, where you play. If you if you if you've got a right to be in that league, well done to Bristol City for coming up. Unfortunately, it can be a step too far. And when you look at that league, I mean West Ham United women, they're down in eleventh. Oh. You know, last couple of seasons they've been top half, as far as I, I remember, or certainly yes, around there. Um, so you know, it, it, I mean, Paul Koncheski used to manage them. I don't know if he still does, but no, um, he doesn't. Yeah, in fact, actually, last season they played us, and then a couple of about a week or so later, Chris, he, he stepped down. He but he was in charge of the game against us last season. 
But yeah, um, it is. I mean, there's a few teams up there. I mean, like you said, up until probably a few weeks ago, I think the final nail in the coffin, unfortunately, was our defeat to semi-finalist opponents, Tottenham. The last time Leicester mm. played, they lost, unfortunately, 1-0 to Tottenham in the league. There was a slight chance Leicester had a chance at European football. And like you say, Chris, the last two seasons have been surviving going into the last two games of the season. You know, the first season literally surviving on the last day and the, the season before with a game to go, they managed to do it. And, um, it, it, you know, like you say, Chris, you look down that league, they're in 11th. If, if you're a Bristol City fan, you look at what Leicester did two years ago, Chris, and you go, well, get a run. Get something sorted, you never know. I mean, yeah. we've had a flux of managerial changes at the top. We had that we had Lydia Bedford come in, uh, who saved us the first time around, and our, yeah. and then our, our, our current situation with manager, which we won't discuss for obvious reasons. So if anyone's going to ask that question, it's just not going to get registered, so don't ask about it. But my point still stands, Chris, is I'm not saying they have to change manager, but something could change. They're only four points off, aren't they, I believe, in 11th place. I think they're not that far behind in terms of like a couple of wins. I, ne I never thought, when, Lyd when Lydia Bedford, was it, that came yeah. in, um, like, and it's like, wow, you know, we've done well to get her. Uh, and she kept us up, like you say, Um Unfortunately, she went the next season, but, um, you know, the manager, uh, Willie Kirk, came in and, and, and he, he did a great job. And look, as well, look, you know, we, we it's the same with the men's league. You know, you've got your Chelsea, Arsenal, Man United. Uh, they're, the, they're the big three in the women's football. Liverpool, fair play to them, came up a couple of seasons ago, having been up before. They're up there fighting. Um Apart from, but when we when we're playing them, apart from the odd game where we have been walloped, we're not really getting walloped that as much as we were in the past. If that makes sense. No, and even the games we've been getting walloped in this season, we were getting walloped in drastically worse last season. Like yes. we lost to Chelsea four nil uh, a couple of games ago, but we lost like eight nil to them. It was embarrassing. Yeah. Yes, you know, and Arsenal... we put up a good performance. It was only towards yeah. the end when we kind of. Have, you know, yeah, well, yeah, and, and again, you could argue, oh, Chelsea took the foot off the gas, but yeah, you can only play what's in front of you, it doesn't matter what they do, and yeah. I'm sure they won't be saying, oh, we took our foot off the gas, especially if Leicester had got a couple of goals, mm. and I, I mean, one of the more notable games in that run one, we were actually top of the league before we played Man City, who are fighting for the, the WSL along with Chelsea now, mm. we got a point away at, at Manchester United. You know, we qualified yeah. out of a group with Man City, uh, Man United and, 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 and Everton to get to the semi-finals of this FA Cup. We, we you know, we, we were top of the league and, and, and nicking points. And, and I remember one big game on the BBC versus Arsenal, Chris. And we lost that game 5-2, mm. but people will forget we were turning up at half time. Yes. It wasn't until that second half where the, where the flux of pressure just absolutely came, came through our doors and... And you know, and, and and took Leicester out, but we have shown and the biggest step up. And I'm going to put the team news up across the bottom of your screen now. He says, "There's the starting eleven, Chris." Now, the first one I want to talk about is 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 Cop Fair Cop. She's for Fair Cop. She can arrest us, but no, mm -hmm. um, she came in as a backup to Yanina Leipzig. Now, Yanina Leipzig mm -hmm. came originally on loan for Bayern Munich. And then yeah. signed for us permanently this season, Chris. She came in at the halfway point of last season and had made the most saves throughout the entire WSL. Not not like it, it wasn't just a Leicester record or anything like that. She was by far and away the busiest keeper. And she only arrived in January, the halfway point of the season. And through injuries and whatnot, because she's not made the bench today, mm -hmm. uh, she had her spot. Temporary, maybe, maybe permanently, we don't know, but stolen by a fair cop. Um, a, fir a first name's not fair, by the way. If you don't get the reference, I'm sorry. But <laughs> my point is, Chris, uh, you know, it's an area that when when cop probably made a debut, an international, an international, I believe she's a Finnish international. No, she's not, Dutch. not a career. You what? Dutch. Dutch. I knew that. I knew it was one of the two of them. I was there and thereabouts. <laughs> but you know, 
she's come in, Chris, and normally with secondary keepers, we've had a few disasters in the past, but she's kind of like the Jakob Stelarczyk to our Madsen Manson in this case. She's come in and done the reins and done really well. You know, she's she's saved penalties. She's, she's kept clean sheets. She's made yeah. vital saves in games. Um, in, in, in a team that could be overwhelmed with all the internationals in there that's going on. Chris, you obviously are only just getting to know the teams and players. Tell everybody why Tierney is your favourite. She's the only one <laughs> I, I knew. Expect me to crash you up that way. <laughs> She's the only one I I, I recognised. No, it went, when I, only only because I I put her on the uh, on the thumbnail. I had to pick one to go on the thumbnail, and uh, I thought oh, I know that name because I'd actually messaged you saying who are the best players, but you took that long to bloody reply. I thought, I'll sort this. I'll pick somebody myself. I mean, to, to, to be fair, she has and been you a great alive, player. You had your little green dot on, so don't be telling me you weren't on. No, no. In, in, in all honesty, when I did reply to you, I was like, actually, it's a good point. There's about five or six you could use. So if you want to use Tierney, great. She, again, she's one that has been with the club for a while. But yeah, Chris, just, I, I, I recognise the name, if you like, you know. Yeah. Um, but, Although yeah, a picture, a picture, a team picture doesn't do well for uh, changing it to to cartoonize it or anything like that. But look, I think you know, you, a goalkeeper comes in and it's a god. I mean, you know, you, I believe you used to be a goalkeeper. I just a rumor I've heard. I just you know. I've never expressed it before in my life. No, Chris no, 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 no. You can that to yourself. But no, look, it's the worst position to come in as as a replacement because. It's a godforsaken job, but the best of times. They always say, don't you? If you you've got to be mad to be a goalkeeper. And she's come in and, and, and done a decent <laughs> well, yeah, we know you are anyway. Um, but she's done she's done a decent job. And you know, if you like let's say, for example, you know, when the men play Bristol, if we saw Stolchok on the uh, on the starting eleven, we wouldn't be pooing our pants. And I think it's the same with, with Cop as well. You know, it, it, it's um, she know she knows how to uh, you know police that back four. There we go. Thank you. There we go. We got there in the end. With it, I didn't want to take you long to go about no. it. Uh, I mean, Chris, um, a far cry in changes as the team. If I told you that Tierney was a part of the team that played last season, she's one of the very few names throughout this whole team that actually make it from last season. Captain Whelan, again, not Susan Whelan. No, we've not got John Rudkin in the stands. Don't worry, it's, it's, it's a different Whelan. John Rudkin's she, manager, Susan Whelan's captain. Oh, yeah, that, that, that says it all. Oh, sat the board, some of you had, some of you are short-minded and, and, and narrow, not narrow-minded and, and small-brained. But anyway, we digress. This is a women's show. We're not, we're not here to discuss the politics of Leicester City in general. But, you know, Rantala is... Um, is, is is a woman on a mission. She actually scored last time out when these two sides met, Chris. And it was a little bit of a bittersweet day for Leicester because they raced, well, I say they raced in two. They went into a 2-0 lead in the space of, of 60 seconds at the very end of the of, of the half, each side of the half, I believe. Mm. Uh, and Rantel scored to make it 2-0 to the Foxes. But they... They drew the game 2-2, Chris, and that was something that uh, the manager spoke about, which has been a bit of an Achilles heel for them this season. And, and, and it's something they have slightly improved upon from last season, but still happened. Letting a two-goal lead slip at that point is probably results like that, Chris, would you say, that's that's put Leicester in the um, the realms of nowhere if you will then you know too good to go down because of bristol city in the points gap but not good enough to challenge that top five for a european spot because of results but, like that maybe but, 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 but this is only our third consecutive i mean I, I, had we been up before this i don't know but in the current guys this is only our third season in the premier league and it is mm. about it's the same with any with you know whichever league you, you're referring to men or women you've got to things have got to grow and they've got to grow naturally. You know, you can't, you know, if you take too big a jump, as we may be finding out ourselves at the moment uh, in the men's team, if you, if you jump too quickly and try and do things too quickly, it can bite you on the bum. So it's got to be a slow, slow progress. And look, you know, if, if you'd given us this position at the start of the season, would we have taken it? Yes. And when you look at the team now, how many internationals have we got in there? 
Well, we've got quite a few. I mean, just going at the start, uh, at the start of lineup, returning from a, a duty, Rose is a Canadian international. She's in there. Rantala, who has been scoring for her country, she she is in in there as well. Cayman, mm. she's a Belgian international. Uh, the list is endless. Uh, Ail, uh, Pelganda, Mamiki. You know, I was going to say sport. about Mamiki. I don't know whether I'm making this up, but I have sort of seen clips and what have you, and she's kind of caught my eye. She she looks a very very good player. She is, uh, she is, uh, mate. And and I tell you what, as well, she's actually. Um, done brilliantly since she came in she was a genuine acquisition she was one of the first for a door along with uh taka and i'm sorry i'm going to butcher names today <laughs> go on go for it mate go for it takarada takarada the other japanese international they brought up that and, with and, or without uh, rice by the way uh with um <laughs> You know, oh, they link up superbly, Chris. There's a few of their goals, you know, I, you know, waiting to try and get this this back up and running. I've obviously been watching the games, keeping an eye on, on them. And some of the link-up play they've, they've made for goals is absolutely brilliant. So, again, credit credit to credit to the club mm. in that sense, Chris, that they're not just going to rest on the laurels. They weren't just going to take these, these you know, 11, 12 new players and go, OK, well, you've got us mid-table. Uh, that'll do. We're not looking for anything more. They've obviously tried to keep building the team up. If I'm looking at it, some of these players that we brought in are your traditional age and experience players. They're not young. Cayman, I think she's 32. So she's probably here to try and have her last few seasons as a WSL player with Leicester, which is absolutely fine because she's, she's playing like a committed woman to the club, which is more than can be said to other 33-year-olds to play for us. <coughs> Evans. <coughs> sorry. Sorry, I had something stuck in my... Sorry, Evans is a twat. <coughs> he might have done better my... in this team. <laughs> oh, no, I know, right? Yeah. But, again, bags of quality, experience, and that mixture of youth is also in there, Chris, as well. You yeah. look at our bench, it's, it's got players that are, that are young and experienced, and that's kind of what we're going to need like you said, Chris, we're only in season three. And it, it, you know, people say, oh, you say it all in now. Well, Leicester three seasons were demanding European football. And look how that's gone for us. I mean, it was great. It was great. But now it's not so great. Um, so I would be very happy if for the next three or four seasons, this is the sort of players we saw at Leicester. And this is the sort of seasons we were having, finishing, finishing eighth, finishing seventh knocking on a European door near the end of that, you know, the end of that time sort of thing. But mm. it, it, it's, it, I mean, it's looking good, Chris. I mean, like I said, I mean, you went through that squad that's been there since, since the start of the WSL uh, when we got promoted, I believe Tierney, Howard, Whelan, Green and Bot. So, you know, it's not like, it's not like, Whoever came in ripped the whole heart of the squad out that got us there. They, they're, they're still around. They're still mm. there. They're, they're, they're still plying their trade. They're, they're, they're still doing a more than good enough job. You know, a few of them have made the starting eleven, Chris. And for me, I just, I just, um, I think that's great testament because it is easy to forget, isn't it, Chris, where they were and just have have a team ripped to shreds, isn't it? We see it all the time in football. It, have Leicester really got that balance right from 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 that? Yeah, we're not we're not ever going to be. You've got you've got to have that that mix, like you say, of experience and youth. Definitely, um, you can't just drop every single player. And this is something that the Germans are very good at at all levels, and that is replacing one team uh, slowly with another one by you know just introducing one or two youngsters at a time. Um, you know, it, it, we're never going to break, I don't think, into that top three. You know, we never probably are. But, you know, look, I, I'm happy with, you know, I mean, I look at it and I don't always look at the results, although obviously it is a results orientated business. Of course it is. But, you know, you've got to look at the performances and the performances have improved a hell of a lot. Yes, we lost to Tottenham, but it was only one nil. You know, I yeah. think we did all right with Matt against Man one of the Manchester City games. You know, so it, yeah. you've got to say that the improvement is there. And it, I, what I'm looking forward to next season, because I mean, <laughs> I can't see that anywhere. I don't think that we can even go down. To be honest with you, I don't know. But how are Chelsea women going to do without their manager? 
because they're managing yeah, these. That, the that, the that's, that's the big thing, isn't it? As well, Chris, mm. it's it's how others respond to it because she, she's been there a long, long time. She's she has won yeah. absolutely everything yeah. with with Chelsea, and and this is the final hurrah, the final season. You know, the Jurgen Klopp obviously jealous has copied the handbook, so that's why he's leaving Liverpool. Uh, although that's not working out for him because he's out the FA Cup, we can't win it all. But Chelsea fighting all fronts. You'd imagine with the talent they've got there, it's an easy job for someone to pick up. It's almost like, give us a job at Man City and we'll win you something with them. You know what I mean? But you never know, Chris. You never know. It could be oh, a Fergie okay. effect. Manchester United and David Moyes. You don't exactly. know, do you? You would think so. I get your point. I'm just being awkward. You get your point. I get your points totally. Uh, hi, Kyle, by the way, he's just popped in. Uh, I do get get what you're saying, but it will be interesting. She's gone off. Obviously, she's American, isn't she? She's gone off to do the American national team. So, you know, good luck to her. Um, but look, you know, as, as I keep as I keep saying, eighth brilliant. You know, let let's not let's not knock. And what I want to say is as well, with everything that's going on, a first of all, it's good to be back watching football again. And, and, and avoiding any any lawsuits and gossip and everything. But be fair play to the club. They're playing at the King Power today. It is the home. Manchester it is the home. Yeah. Manchester City don't play at um, the Etihad. Um, no, they don't. I don't do think not. Chelsea play at uh, Stamford Bridge. So fair play. And yes, all right, you know, it's empty. You could argue the atmosphere. But it just shows the backing, doesn't it? It does, and it, it's it's really good to see because other clubs should maybe take note in that. And I know for certain clubs, I can't imagine, like we've talked about them earlier, Bristol City would have that. Um, but it's good to see that they are coming back into house. Chris, we've got about a couple of minutes to go until kickoff. I was meant to do this a bit earlier, but I got so wrapped up talking about it because I do love talking about it. As you can see there, if you are in the comments section, you're popping in. It's the first run of this one, so bear with me, guys. But if you want to get your score predictions in, like we do on Chris's, Chris, I'm going, I'm going to go for Leicester to not concede today. I'm going for a 2 0 Leicester win. Chris, what's Ooh. your score predictions? What, 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 you know what? Today? this is like this is like me trying to predict League Two, um, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, I, I'm going to say, looking at this, because Leicester have won... Oh, I'll keep it quick. Uh, Leicester have won two of the last five. Brighton have won one. Uh, I'm ladies, going ladies, to... Ladies, Hello. Ladies, check, 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 check the names. Find them out. <laughs> he, uh, he can't spell... He, he's left the is off. He's just got lads instead of ladies. I uh, yes. Can I just well, say, Luke? I, I mean, I just, he probably hasn't got a goalkeeper in his squad. But yeah, sorry, go on, Chris. Go on. I've just got. I've just got your message, Luke. I take it you don't like that guy. Um, but, uh, um, I'm going to go for a draw. Ooh, he's going for a draw. Shock horror. Chris goes for a draw. <laughs> look, stop it. Stop it. You're not being horrible to me. No, I look. I I just. And I would take a draw at this point because, like you say, we're not going to go down. We are playing with a bit of freedom, so you would hope for the win. But we, our, our recent form hasn't been as good as it was. Various reasons for that, you could argue, we won't go into. Um, yeah, I'm going to go for a draw. Uh, score draw, ball draw, Desmond? You, you just want me to say I'm going for a Desmond, don't you? Do you know what? I'm going to go for a Desmond. Hey! <laughs> I tell you what, we need to get a Desmond. We need to get a button. So every time we you get, say we it, need, we can we press need... the Desmond button and get in there. We do. I'll I, I, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a note of that. Something for me to do while I'm waiting um, to go on any tonight. Nate, brilliant question just before we get into the kickoff as the teams are lining up. He says, what style of football do the women play and what is key to victory in my first time tuning in? Nate, absolutely brilliant that you are here, mate. Absolutely appreciate it. They are very similar to the men's. They, they, they were probably actually a bit better in terms of pace and ability. Again, different style of football, different level, I suppose. But they are very patient. They build it up. They pass it around. They try and get in behind the teams. And the key to victory is, is the front three. The front three are very much the key to victory. Um, 
Um, Momoki, uh, the Japanese international, she's very oh, good at it. Amy's getting Amy's an award. Oh, yeah, it's an award for, I think it's Tierney for, yes, it is, for 100. So today is Sam Tierney's 100th appearance. Chris really knew that when he picked her as his favourite player. He knew that all along. But, yeah, the key is just stay composed, trust them on it when they've got the ball, and kind of a bit like Leicester at the moment, they've got the width play balls into the box they've got experience in the middle so that's the key area where Leicester are going to win it that that, that experience in the middle the composure on the ball and yeah they, they, they play the same sort of style it is bred throughout the youth the, the men's the under 23s the women's they all play this style and also I must say although I can't find a league standing for them the women's under 21s do the same and they're doing very well this season Chris I am going to let you go because you're doing my job for this one, aren't you? You're doing the yeah. um, you're doing the um, early like the halftime show for me. They're just about to get going, Chris. So I'm going to do my best time, commentary buddy. and try not to bore these people to death. And I will see you at halftime, mate. Yeah, halftime, buddy. Take care. Take care. So there we are, guys. We are seconds away from getting underway. Uh, I hope you're all enjoying this watch along. I've seen some of you popping in all throughout as they take the knee to start off with. Uh, no place for racism in football. Here we go. Brighton get us underway. This is this is a good match. It's going to be a good match to see. Obviously, last time out, they were 2-2. It'll be interesting to see how Leicester deal with, um, with the home press as they give away the ball early on in the half. Deep in half, Brighton playing in black to green. They are kicking towards the, I know my stadium well enough, that is towards the north stand. Uh, now they're kicking towards the south stand. Leicester are attacking the family stand, uh, the north stand in front. So Leicester are kicking, how do they say it in commentary? Is it left to right? I don't know. I'm not, I, I, I don't know how they do work this out. I don't know me left from me right half the other time. But Brighton have an early chance here. Oh, that was well cut out at the back for Leicester. It's a bit of a shaky start, typically, like the men like to start the game slow. But uh, Leicester can't really get a foothold uh, on top of things. There's a lovely FBS training uh, logo goes behind it, but there's King Power. It's quite a packed stadium. It is only the West Stand that is opened up for the WSL games live and at home at King Power. But they do a, a lovely job, you, the fans there today, as it's gone all the way back to Cop who plays the ball out out wide and just just as I told you Nate they're passing it around wonderfully they're trying to come down this right hand side now as it is I really should have grabbed my headphones for this the ball just tries to get there down the right but it's back to the Brighton keeper though well pressured well pressured there by Leicester Brighton do come away with it with a throw in just Deep inside their own half. Leicester trying to peg Brighton in down that right-hand side. Keeping the pressure on. Brighton are forced back. The keeper is giving out an option and is not pressed and able to play the ball out of defence. Leicester trying to press at the edge of the box. And there's a mistake there. Oh, but the foul is given against Leicester City because apparently a soldier barge is too aggressive. So, sounds about right. At least the officiating is just as um, inept as it is in the men's game. Solder barge, free kick. Nothing to it. Three minutes in. Bit scruffy. But that, that keeps Leicester ahead of Brighton in the league. And, of course, if you are just joining us and wondering how these two teams are doing in the league, Leicester are eighth, Brighton are tenth. Two points separating them. In the league as Leicester win the initial free kick. A great ball played in down the right-hand side. Shot comes in. Oh, well held by the Brighton keeper. Try to lift the bluff the ball over at the near post. It was a great play by Leicester. Intricate ball in down the right-hand side. Escaping the two defenders. Try to dink it over the keeper. Didn't quite get enough height in the ball. And in the end, a nice easy save for the goalkeeper. Who doesn't play it outside a six-yard box. Kicks it long. And Leicester win the first initial flickings. 
but Brighton regain the ball, but Leicester do step it up in here and try and go down the left-hand side. And Rose has won Leicester a free kick in a dangerous crossing position. Great pressure from the Leicester midfield has allowed Leicester to have a free kick. It's about 35 yards out. It's probably not shooting range, but it is a good chance for Leicester early on to get the ball into the box as the Brighton player gets a talking to. So the officials, you know, giving out warnings already. All the players on the edge of the box, all looking to break that offside trap from this initial free kick. I'm trying to see because I should have got my headphones in. I might I might dash upstairs and grab my headphones in a break in play so I can hear who it is and tell you lovely people who it is because it's really hard to see on this. Have a free kick here. Left-hand side. Dummy stepped over. Cross high into the back post box. It's header. Oh, it's cleared off the line by a Brighton player and the referee's blown for a, a head injury. And you know what, folks? I'm going to use that time to dash upstairs and grab my headphones so I can commentate a little bit better. Okay, I can't find them. God's sake. Uh, I don't have them, folks. I don't have them, folks. I can't find them anywhere. I'm not I'm not making you guys miss miss it as a play is about to restart. Here. And Brighton have it with a goal kick. Sorry about that, folks. I can't find my headphones to use to wear to listen to it. And knocking me out. Exercise is bad for your kids. Um, but Brighton have the ball with the goalkeeper who sent it long. Uh, I would ask what time you're at. I guess LCFC YouTube broadcast doesn't want to put a score up at the time. Now I've got it on the FF player because, yeah, typically, you know, decided perfect time to get the channel back up and running. The international break, I can stream it on here. No competition. And yeah, that's got the same idea, didn't they? But please stay here. Please stay here, guys, because this is going to be the start of a running of games uh, as long as I can get them on screen. As Leicester break up play on the halfway line and a ball played forward, but it's over hit. Um, almost preemptive pass, really, to see if someone was breaking on the right-hand side. Um, but to no avail. And now, under pressure, the Brighton goalkeeper plays a risky short ball out. Leicester players not all on board, but it's broken up brilliantly there by Leicester. They're trying to win at the edge of the box, but Brighton managed to get away from it. And they're trying to come down this right-hand side. Ball into the middle. Poor pass. Leicester regained the ball. And it is knocked all the way back to Cop in the goal. Um, Leicester playing OK. They've just started to settle in these first 10 minutes. We are, uh, well, five minutes, shall I say. We're six, seven minutes into the game. And it is still currently nil-nil. Let's just start to get a foothold in this game. I mean, what is a packed uh, stadium on the, the West Stand? Um, oh, thank you, Nate. I appreciate that. As Let's come in on the left-hand side. Great ball works, but it's just over hit. Um, I can't tell you who it is because my bloody headphones aren't around anywhere for me to use. But on the left-hand side, the run just wasn't quite made. What missed slight miscommunication. Otherwise, Leicester would have been in for another chance at goal. The ball was played in on a, uh, over our left shoulder, but it wasn't quite there. And Brighton have themselves a goal kick, which is not being taken by the goalkeeper. Um, it's played back to the goalkeeper. Very strange. The goalkeeper didn't take it. Got the ball back, but Leicester have won it back straight away. Edge of box, right hand side. Great ball played out. The right is crossing. Aerial ball in the back post. Evaded by everybody. Leicester have won a corner. It is dealt with at the last second uh, by Brighton. That's a great break in play. Uh, I'm going to see if I can try and get some volume. Let me know if you can hear it, because if you can, I can't obviously do so. Um, but as does. Um, Rantala, I need to remember number eight is Rantala. She is over the corner. I uh, I can't hear it. If you guys can hear it, let me know and I'll, I'll remute the video because obviously copyright and all that. 
Uh, short corner taken, left hand side to the edge of the box, right back to Rantler, back out now to the edge of the box. It's cross whipped in near post. It's a terrible one, unfortunately. And uh, that attack, unfortunately, comes to nothing for Leicester. Um, Brighton now, since since that first minute or so, have really, really struggled to get a foothold on the ball. And again, they're taking this um, taking this goal kick short, which we all do. It's some new rules, but it's it's the right back that seems to be taking it. Uh, cheers, Nate. Thanks for that. It's good. I might not be able to hear it over myself as Leicester have won it again deep in their own in Brighton's half. They're causing all sorts of trouble with these short goal kicks. The pressure's working across the cross goal. Comes out on the right hand side. Not quite there for Leicester. But this is ominous for Leicester City. Brighton keep playing it out from the back from these goal kicks. Eventually the pressure's going to tell as Rantelar is appealing for a, a corner, but the Brighton defender did enough there to earn her side a goal kick but alarming signs from Brighton right now they are not with it at all they are giving the ball away in the middle Leicester's pressure is causing them problems and Brighton for the, for the best part of four minutes haven't got into Leicester's half and again they play it short this time the left back kicks it to the goalkeeper why she doesn't kick it long from the start I don't know as Leicester again win the header, knock it on forward into Brighton's half. Halfway in Brighton's half, they win the ball. They go back to the halfway line. It's then passed out wide, aiming for Rose, but unfortunately overhit and too far behind her. And Brighton get a free kick halfway inside their own half. It's the first time Brighton have really touched the ball in any meaning here. Although there is a break in play. Uh, didn't say what for. But uh, Brighton here with a throw-in on their right-hand side. Throwing it down the line. Throwing back, to, giving back to the, the throwing taker who hoofs the ball long. Only to a Leicester shirt. Leicester flick on header. Win it on the left-hand side. Rose looking to get the ball off Ale. And the ball is out and dealt with. Brighton finally venturing into Leicester's half. Winning a throw-in just inside the Leicester City half. Brighton looking to launch their first meaningful attack in 11 minutes of play here at the King Power Stadium. It is throwing down the line. Uh, Right-hand side here. Brighton are trying to come across the ball and they've got him behind here. First the challenge for Brighton down to the bar line. Cross is good. Leicester Blue shirts in there, but the ball first up. Brighton shotting shot on. It's just over. It's blazed over in a minute, minute of panic for Brighton. The number seven had a glorious opportunity to put Brighton ahead. Thankfully for the Foxes, she couldn't compose herself, uh, put pressure on by the defence, and she blazed her first-time effort well over the bar. But a letter for Leicester, as uh, Brighton's first chance could have given them the lead. But as it is, Leicester now from the resulting goal kick, trying to break down the right-hand side. Uh, a foul not given, but the throw-in is given as Leicester instantly get back into Brighton's half, just inside the right-hand side. It's a throw into Leicester. Option short and options long for uh, for Leicester here. They go long, but headed clear easily by Brighton. But again, Leicester exerting that pressure onto them, forced Brighton all the way back. And then did it around whether to give it back to the goalkeeper or not. She's not being allowed to settle, though. Closed down by the Leicester uh, front line. And they are sporadically passing it around. This is all over the place by Brighton. Still, though, they've had probably the best chance of the game so far. But again, Leicester win it in the midfield. And they're coming forward now. Lovely, intricate, short passing in the middle. Spread out right to the right. Edge of the box. Jinx away inside. Has a shot. Has a goal. Oh, what a save by the Brighton keeper. A great effort by Rantelar. It is the number eight. Fantastic work on that right-hand side. She cut inside. Fatou-esque. She jimmied the defender left and right. Dropped the shoulder. Had a go. Created her own space. Went to try and curl in the top left-hand corner. The keeper made a brilliant one-handed stop. Uh, and it is a corner to Leicester. Now, the last corner they played short, short didn't quite go to plan. Will Rantelart put this in the box? The Fox is looking to make their dominance count in these early stages of the match. Cross into the box. And it's uh, headed away by Brighton, but only to the box. But a shot in anger there, really more than anything. Just fluffed into the ground, unfortunately. 
for Leicester and Brighton managed to get away with it and eventually earn themselves a throw-in on this left-hand side. Uh, still in their own half are Brighton, but they have shown with that chance they had a few minutes ago that they are going to cause Leicester some danger and threat. Uh, yeah, yeah, that little triangle passing, Nate, was absolutely gorgeous to watch. As yet again, Leicester win it on the halfway line. They've tried to play the ball on the right-hand side. It is blocked and out for a throw-in. Leicester on the attack on the right side. Throw-in taken short and quickly as Leicester tried to move this attack on. Again, ball in, trying to land on the right-hand side, but it's recovered by Brighton. But again, a miscommunication between the defender and goalkeeper nearly allowed Leicester in there. But for for the for the umpteenth time, Leicester would have pressure nearly pale in comparison. And now the Brighton player holds on to the ball too long, luckily gets away with it from a Brighton's perspective, unlucky from a Leicester. But Leicester are keeping Brighton well and truly pinned back in their own half in this game. And Brighton have a free kick deep in their own half. It's almost in between the in line with the penalty spot. And the edge of the box, this throwing, that's how penned in they are. So they throw it down the line and Leicester yet again win it here. And they've got a great chance to build some play. It's pass out left, into the middle. Foul not given by the referee. Was a bit 50-50 and Brighton get away with the ball. They're trying to get into the Leicester half. Leicester getting back, but managing to keep their shape and trying to keep Brighton as pinned back as far as they can. They have benches now down this left side. Into the Leicester half. Leicester get a foot in there, but Brighton still keep hold of the ball. Halfway into the Leicester half, for the second time in this game, Brighton have ventured into Leicester's half and they've got the ball halfway in the Foxes' half, trying to uh, do better than they did with their first attempt of the game as they switch the play all the way over to the right hand side. It's a little bit of a bad pass and they are forced all the way back to the goalkeeper. It's a little bit of pressure there, but unless the striker nearly gets its rewards and a wasted opportunity for Brighton to put some pressure on as Leicester try and win the ball in the middle of the park. And it's a handball given there on the halfway line. Leicester take the free quick and they take it quickly. They're charging down the left-hand side, passed into the middle. Heavy pass though, breaks up the play and Brighton have a chance to clear to the to much relief to the Brighton fans. That's a great ball through the middle, but the offside flag, it does go up. Leicester were very alert to the danger of the Brighton forward there. It looked, it was a great ball through, and had it been onside, she'd have been 1v1 with Cop, but the defence did their job very well, and the attack comes to nothing, as it is Leicester now, but in unfamiliar territory, camped inside their own half, trying to... Law Brighton out and start an attack as it's here now with Cop on um on the ball. It's played to the right side of the field. The ball hit down the line, stays in play. Um Ale tried to get there. I apologize if I'm getting these names wrong, but Brighton come down the left hand side with number seven. Number seven now causing Leicester all kinds of trouble. Cross into the box. Great pressure, I thought. No, apparently not. It is a free kick to Brighton. I thought that was great defending by the right back for Leicester, but it appears not. It appears that um, they've got a free kick in a dangerous position. Left-hand side on the byline next to the corner of the box. Uh, you would say it's in line with a six-yard corner on that left-hand side, just outside the box. Uh, the Japanese international, Mimoki, uh Digressing with the referee there, saying, um, asking why the decision was gained. I thought it was a fair challenge myself, but it was deemed to be a foul. So, despite Leicester's control in this game and constant pressure, Brighton have yet another opportunity to try and take the lead. We are 18 minutes into this game. There's still Leicester City nil, Brighton nil uh, in the WSL. Uh, Left-hand side free kick. Two players over it. There was a number seven, and I cannot see the shirt number of the other Brighton player in there. The ball is number seven, seems to be running away from it. Ball comes into the middle, headers in and headed well out of danger by Leicester. And now they're trying to counter attack here. Oh, couldn't get away from it. 
And it's gone all the way back to the Brighton goalkeeper. So if you see me leaning forward and wondering what I'm doing, I'm trying to hear what the commentators say so I can tell you names better than I can. Typical me, I couldn't find a headset to use that um, that would work on this thing. Because um, I can't remember where I've put it. Typical me. But Brighton have got the danger away momentarily. They are still in their boxes. They play a lovely ball out wide. But she is going to get there. And it stayed in play. And Leicester have switched off a little bit. They thought that ball was going to come out. But then a poor pass has ricocheted back to Brighton. Second bite at the cherry now. Dancing, turning great feet. Cross into the box. Well, wasn't much of a cross into the box, I'm afraid, for Brighton fans. Because it's gone straight out of play. Um, and it is a goal kick for Leicester City. And Brighton are showing that they can be dangerous when given the opportunity afforded to them by Leicester. That's twice now they've broken down the right. Um, uh, the, cheers, Nate. Cheers for that. They've, you know, they, they, they have shown to threat. Two good opportunities come here, but Leicester now have it in the middle of the park. Tierney has gave it to Rose on the left-hand side. Uh, Tierney gets it back. Lovely, intricate pass in. And as I say, that commentator's curse, it goes out of play. Nay, yay, nay, can you hear that? Do I need to tone it down? Let me know, please, mate, because I can hear some of the names now at this volume. But Brighton have a throw-in on uh, their right-hand side, and it is nodded out, straight out, for another throw-in. Slap bang on halfway, as Leicester look to... Get the ball back, and they've won it here in the middle. A great switch of play to Rantler, who's in acres of space. She gets the ball under control. She's got one defender in front of her. Is she going to try a shot again? She tries to win with her box. It's covered back as she shot. It's blocked again. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. Cara Barley with a clearance there. Rose. Dion Rose has the ball. It's crossed in. It's looped in. It's tried to play across Rantler. Oh, she just misread the bounce. It took it away from her. She tried to come and meet the ball, but it didn't get there. And Rantala really is the main threat for Leicester uh, going into in, in, in this first half. She's doing really well, but yet to take the lead are the Foxes. And you feel that they will have to make this pressure count, as Brighton have shown on two occasions already that they can be dangerous from crosses into the box. It is currently back with the Leicester goalkeeper, Cop, kind of doing a, a mad to wink situation there in the middle. Leicester. Unpressured, passing the ball around at the back. A uh, couple of step overs by Cop. As uh, as uh, it goes back out. Not much going on here, folks. As Leicester slowly moves the ball forward in their own half. But it's picked up by Brighton on this right-hand side for Brighton. And now they're trying to forge another attack. Ball played down that right-hand side. It seems to be a side that Leicester, uh, Brighton are going to favour to get in behind. A word, but it's straight through to the goalkeeper. And Cop has all the time in the world. Ball at her feet, and she then does pick it up just as a brighter player tries to close her down. And it's thrown out and gone straight back to Cop, who's going to hit the ball right white. But it's an awful goal kick. Captain Schmeichel has kicked it straight out of play. Um, on this left-hand side for Brighton, as it would be them attacking down the left-hand side. 22 minutes gone. Still Leicester City women nil. Brighton women nil. And if you are new to the channel, please do subscribe and smash that like button. I know it's been a while since content's here, and I, I know the scattered amount of people, but any support is much appreciated for this channel that's going to come back with a bang. As Rose looks to try and win the ball, she's held it up brilliantly here on the left-hand side. Tricks and turns away, trying to get past her, her, her player to get in. And has she won Leicester a throw in there? She has. And that's superb work by Diane Rose. She's won Leicester a free kick deep in Brighton's half on this left-hand side, just in line with the edge of the box. Leicester pressing Brighton well and, and causing mistakes and creating their own chances from it as Leicester take the throw in near the corner flag here. Maniki has the ball. She's forced to go backwards, though. 
as are Leicester, and they're regrouping the ball, just trying to force Brighton out here. Although a shoulder by tackle, no free kick given, and Brighton are through one on one. This could be a serious chance. Leicester defenders recover well, but there's still a chance on the left hand side. Number seven cuts inside the defense. Shot. What a save by Cop. Brilliant save down low to a right hand side. Fantastic save. And yet again, Brighton proven the number seven, their best player of the match. To bundle the play off the ball, shoulder bars. I thought it was too rough because the free kick was given to Brighton earlier for one. Lots of similar. And she broke through. The Leicester defence tried to recover, recovered well, but the number seven cut back the ball. Eight yards out, hit a low thunderous shot into the right side. A great low save by Cop, and the camera was showing the replay, and there is a Leicester player down injured here but what a chance for Brighton Brighton showing that Leicester need to make the most of this of this uh, advantage uh play they're having a control because if they don't they're going to get punished and Brighton will find a way in and it was a fantastic chance as uh as yeah it was a foul ironically by the Brighton player there kind of tread on the toes and Leicester have I've got a free kick to deal with here why is that a free kick to Brighton then if you stand on our play, you get a free kick, apparently, because that's all the referee is showing in there. That she um she stood on our player and they've got a free kick in a dangerous position. So it's Brighton's turn uh to to hold to hold up. Um yeah, what a save, Nate. You are one hundred percent correct. What a save it was. Fantastic save, great reaction save, but it's Brighton's turn to be holding. The, the you know the possession and the ball they've got a free kick here in a dangerous area i'm not still cannot tell you why nor can commentate to why she's a leicester player fell over she stood on him uh speaking of casper 100 appearances for denmark yes congratulations to our former fox 100 100 appearances for Denmark, very well deserved and Tierney, today's player making a 100th leicester appearance uh, so, yes, 100 all around there, Nate. Uh, Sam Turney making a 100th appearance for the Foxes. As Brighton, well, there's got to be a few minutes added on in this half already. I can tell you it's taken about five minutes, it feels like, for this free kick to be given. It hasn't, but it does feel that way. As the number seven, who had that fantastic effort for Brighton, uh, it was fantastic, say, by, uh, by Cop. Looks to have it, but she actually laid it off to number eight. Load of a shot. Was that another fantastic save by Copper? Is it just wide? It's been deemed as a save or a deflection from the shot by the number eight for Brighton. We're having a look at this again. It was a rolled free kick by the number seven. The number eight to Brighton had a shot, and I think Cop made a save there. And if it is, it's another fantastic stop low down to her, her right hand side. But Brighton now having the pressure. This is their best spell of the game by far. 20, just ticking over into 27 minutes. Corner, throws it in. Headed away by Leicester. But only as far as out to the box. But Brighton do recycle this to the halfway line. They're having their best spell of possession. They're trying to make this count. The ball down to right is cut out. Leicester now looking to get a foothold back on the ball and regain control of this game. Leicester now spreading the ball around. Brighton seem to have their tails up. They seem to sense that they can get themselves in front of this game after spending much of this half on the back foot. Leicester dominating, but now Brighton committing players forward. And this is how Leicester like it. They bring the ball forward here well. Numbers and advantages. It's a three on four situation. Four v four. Now ball switch over to the left hand side. Vrantala forced to cut it out back to left, and that was well read by the Brighton players, and now it is Brighton's turn to try and break away. This game really is opening up, folks, on the side. Leicester are winning the midfield battle the majority, but Brighton have proved threatening, and I'd have to say, out of all the chances, Rantler's efforts probably the best of the Foxes, but Brighton have had the clearer of the two chances, two fantastic saves by Cop to keep the scores level at the halfway point of this first half. Uh, but here, Brighton now feeling a bit more confident. They have their feet uh, firmly planted in the ground. They have settled down here. Leicester not taking advantage of that early game pressure. Being a bit more conservative now. 28 minutes gone. The ball is on the left-hand side as Brighton the ball over, play the ball over the top to try and get into Leicester's half. But it's well dealt with 
by the Leicester defence. Here, and the ball is back with Cop. At least I know her name. Very easily settled into her name, don't I? Um, Sophie Howard has the ball. It's played out to Diane Rose. Uh, and that switch, unfortunately, was not met by a lesser player. Mamiki plays the ball into the middle, though. Lesser trying to break down that right-hand side with Diane Rose. But the pass just can't get there. Now, as Brighton try and burst forward, they're looking for an offside flag. And it is raised. But that's, again, great play by Brighton. They're getting in behind Leicester. Luckily, the defence is alert and switched on and playing that high defensive line well. But uh, signs are coming thick and fast by Brighton that they can cause and will cause Leicester problems. And Leicester really need to get that early possession control back um, because they haven't really, apart from that Rantelar chance, uh, done much in the way of creating clear-cut opportunities through their possession as uh, a 50-50 becomes a 60-40 and a player is down for Brighton. So, yeah, there'll be a couple of minutes added on as we come up to the half-hour mark uh, of of the game. Uh, referee just talking to the players. Uh, it, was, it was a coming together. It's more the collision afterwards, I think, the decision is given for. It's one of them, isn't it? Whoever got the ball gets the decision. Uh, it's just inside the Brighton half from the free kick, and they're looking to send this into the Leicester half. No short play. Um, Brighton have cut that out. That first 18, 20 minutes or so was just pure mistakes by Brighton, but they got along with it, and they still give it away to Leicester. Um, although pressure forces it out of play, Leicester gets to restart with a throw-in halfway inside the Leicester City half. So Leicester play it back to Cobb. It eventually gets there. There's a free kick given, though. Too much pressure. Got caught the toes of the Leicester left back. And the first yellow card of the game goes to Brighton's number 11. She's got a few warnings. The referee said, that's your lot. Three strikes, you're out. Well, it's not a red card, as, as I skillfully have lost my pen as well. So, ever the professional, 31 minutes. Uh, and the number 11 for Brighton goes into the box. She's been given warnings and warnings, persistent fouling. It is a yellow card for the number 11 of Brighton. Just to get away with that there, a fair enough contact and it been pressure on for Leicester, but the free kick's given and uh, a little one-two between uh, the player and the goalkeeper. She slips. Taking the kick, gets away with it, goes over the Brighton player's head and Leicester coming forward. The ball into, threaded through into Brighton's half. Rantelaar, um, yes, is there. But Leicester trying to create something at the edge of the box. The passes don't quite go off. It's a turn. He's got the ball now. Cayman's looked the ball in. Header. Oh, it's just, not, he's got the direction, but not enough power on it. Uh, from from wheeling the captain today's captain she is a lovely flick on her they just had no couldn't generate the power behind it and then the end a comfortable save for Leicester but Brighton have gone back to playing the ball short out the goalkeeper and it nearly caused some trouble again forced to go long with it and a nudge in the back there from Green just shy of the halfway line and Brighton a reprieve and a free kick and a chance to maybe get uh get forward with the ball. Yeah, Nate, 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 Brighton's number 11 getting really frustrated. Could be something, you know, the same football. Keep that keep that in your mind. Remember, what she's on a yellow. She's getting frustrated. Maybe try and get in her head. It's frowned upon by some people don't like it. But who knows? As Leicester win the ball in Brighton's half here, though the pass out to Rantelaar, just go and fetch it. And in so to take the sting out of the attack. Leicester forced Back into their own half. Brighton pressing. But Leicester won't mind this. This is what Leicester want. They, this is exactly what they, they play through in all their leagues. Whether it's the men's, the under-23s, the women's under-21s. They all play the same style. They want teams to come on to them. They want to be able to unlock their midfield and get in behind them. A great flick-on header here from a long kick from Cop Has given Rantelaar 
the chance to come down this right-hand side, but she slowed up a little bit as a ball's tried to play in behind, and it's well cut out for by the Brighton number five, uh, stopping what would have been surely a certain goal there by Leicester for Leicester. Great, great cut out there as Leicester have their third corner, I believe, of the game. The first one on the, the right-hand side of the field. And it is Rantala. She is the designated corner taker. She's just receiving the ball here. And Leicester have a chance again to, to get themselves in front in this game. And the arm goes aloft. The Leicester players will know that signal. Ball floated in high towards the back post. Headers go up. It's cleared. Brian Suarez hits the box. Shot foot back taken, but now Brighton have a chance to counter here potentially. They play the ball through the middle, but it's gone to Leicester's shirt. Leicester now back on the pressure. Rantala gets the ball here. Get real. Tierney on a 100th appearance for Leicester. Working hard. Surely wins a free kick official. And she does great work there by Sam Tierney on a 100th appearance for Leicester. She's put in a show. She ran onto a ball that was played into her by Rantelaar. And then she was hauled down in the end by a combination of two Brighton players. The second one giving away the foul. Well, no, the first one. From where the ball's been positioned, the first one was definitely a foul. There was two fouls committed on her. The referee's pulled it back for the first one. Leicester, right-hand side, in line with the six-yard box at the edge of the box. Dangerous, dangerous position to put the ball in. I think it is the Japanese international Minky and Rantla over it. Which one of them will take it? 35 minutes gone here. Still nil-nil between Brighton women and Leicester women at the King Power Stadium. Who will take this free kick? Rantla moves away from it. Mamiki plays the ball in. Throws away with a back post. Headed across goal. Nobody can attack it. Ball still not cleared. Brighton get in there. But Leicester win it back on the edge of the box. They're forced back to the halfway line. Trying to rebuild this attack. Keep this attack going. Keep the pressure up on Brighton. Ball played into the middle. Now Leicester, Mamiki trying to work her magic. The Japanese international has been a sensation since arriving at King Power Stadium. And just as I say, that curse of the commentator, she gets the ball dispossessed. And now Brighton in a 3-3-3 here. Players left and right of her. She's choosing to go it alone. Leicester crowd her out. And that will be a corner to Brighton. Defended well by Leicester. It was a Leicester corner that ma managed to get countered attack by Brighton. They were in a three-on-three. Three, and just as Leicester started to get more numbers back, she chose to take the shot. Sam Tierney in a combination of green, I believe, getting a block in there. And it's Brighton's turn to have a chance from the corner. Corner now looking to be taken fairly quickly. It is a corner on this left-hand side as Brighton are attacking it. How I show you is how I'm seeing it. If they're going that way, it's the left-hand side, right-hand side. <laughs> Um, they have got a corner. They take it in. It's whipped in all the way to the back post and cleared again easily by Leicester. And it's Diane Rose. Diane Rose trying to break away for Leicester. She's done well to hold the ball up. She's done superbly, actually, to keep the ball on it. But then she goes back inside and loses the ball after all that hard work. I feel like I curse any sort of good luck, good work by Leicester. But they have won the ball back now. And it's Tierney, magic footwork, brilliant play by Sam Tierney. Plays a ball down the line to Rantler, but she may have been offside. That's why she didn't move or she was coming inside for it. And Brighton really grew. But this is where Leicester put the press on Brighton and tend to win the ball back. They've done it all half. All for all 37 minutes of this game, they've been doing it really well. And that is a soft free kick, another 50-50. And it's green, I believe. Or is it Howard? I think. I don't know how, don't ask me how I confuse them. I recognise the number and the hairstyle. But it is a free kick. And one of the Brighton players is having a real long talking to to the referee. What is going on here? It's the number, it's the number 10 of Brighton. I thought it was a number 11. I was going to say she needs to be careful. She's going to talk herself into a second yellow, but it's a number 10 that to be talking, uh, talking herself into a card. Just calm down now as Brighton have a free kick deep on the left-hand side in their own half. It's played short again. Little one-two interaction between the Brighton players and it looks to switch the play over to the right. But Leicester cut out the option. They're forced to go into the middle. And again, pressure nearly pays for Leicester as they nearly win the ball back. But it's back practically where they took the free kick and 
tried to go back to goalkeeper, but again, Leicester read it, and again, pressure allows Leicester to have the ball in their box. They're looking to try and get a foothold on it to keep the pressure on, but Brighton just get a foothold and trying now to break away on this right-hand side. But it's played instead on the left-hand side to absolutely nobody. Bit of a miscommunication. I think she was undecided on how she was playing the ball to the player in the middle. And in the end, Leicester get away with it and have the ball on the right-hand side. Instantly kicked upfield, but Brighton now win the ball back. And they have it on this left hand side, the number 11, already on the yellow, trying to cause uh, a chance here for Brighton and Leicester of troubles, but she's not managed to do so. Brighton still have it. They are back on the halfway line. Play advantage given there by the referee. A good slide challenge allowed to go as well. And Leicester do ever so well. And then the referee pulls it back for, uh, for a previous foul. Well, I'm not sure. I think half a second later there and that advantage that was given is then played out because they had the ball. Well, I suppose I can see why it's given. Uh, the blow and play didn't fully have the ball under control. So a chance for Brighton halfway inside the Leicester half to put the ball in the box. A dangerous chance for, for Brighton and one that Leicester must be aware, wary of to, to keep an eye on. And because... Uh, that Brighton's danger has come from crosses left and right of it. They favour the right hand side, but both times they put crosses in from either side, they have done well. Just a little over uh, five minutes to go until half time. The ball's it's a shot in the end, and Cop is forced to tip them over the bar. It was straight at her, admittedly, but the pace and power of the power of that shot what a shot by the number 14. I want to say she can't have a shirt like that, you know, just hide a number. Brilliant effort from a, a well over 35 yards out. It would have been contender as goal of the, the month. Uh, certainly, if not goal of the season, had it gone in. But Brighton, given a corner, another vital save from Cop. Her third of the game. She's made two to her right earlier in the half. She's made one now to keep it level. Uh, she is not, mate, at the moment. As the ball comes in again, and yet again, for the fifth time, I believe, Brighton have had five corners. Leicester, first the header on it getting it out, but the ball's bouncing around the box. Leicester scramble it out wide and out over on the right hand, left hand side, sorry, for a throw in here. Oh no, brilliant work by Leicester. Brighton thought they were throwing. I did as well. Uh, but Leicester have been awarded a throw in deep in their own half. On this right hand side, Leicester send it down the line, trying to get in Plays and there's a little bit of a 50-50 scrap. That surely is a free kick, and it is a free kick to Leicester. That was more WWE than WSL. As Leicester tried to take it quickly, but the number seven obstructs a little bit. Cheekily gets away with that and stops it from going in. And Leicester, despite all the dominance, it will be Brighton at the happier of the two sides here. If it stays this scoreline at half time, nil nil. Leicester have had some chances, but Brighton have had more and the better, you would say. You feel like Leicester's early dominance, they'll feel frustrated uh, that they haven't, they won't be coming in at the break half, at a half time. A goal to the good. There's still time though in this first half and there will be a few couple of minutes stoppage time. We had a, a, a delay in the stoppage and, um, and, and there's been several free kicks given. So still time for Leicester to amend that. Uh, they actually have a free kick no, yes, no, do they? Yes. Referee just deciding which side he wanted to give it to. And Leicester have a free kick halfway inside their own half on as, as if they were attacking, which they are doing on their left-hand side. Uh, and I forget a camera reverse is what I, I, I do, which way I point to how I'm trying to say it. But uh, Leicester have it here now with Rose, who's batting away on that left-hand side. She wins Leicester a free kick. Uh, in, in line with the with the six yard box on the left hand side, deep in Brighton's territory, Leicester looking to gain regain a foothold in possession and control of this match in what is a packed West Stand for today's fixture. Uh, Leicester now have the ball on the left hand side. Little bit of miscommunication there, but Leicester keep it. It's in type of the corner flag, trying to win a corner. They don't win a corner, but they do win a throw in, practically touching the corner flag here. Great build up of pressure by Leicester. Brighton trying to see this out and get into half time. They're happy with the two with the score at 0 0. 
Ramiki gets the ball, played back out there. And now Rose has a brilliant chance here. Cuts in our left hand side, cuts down the right, but she's dispossessed. And Brighton now will try and counter, but Leicester win it there. Slap passing, costing Brighton possession. Da Dion Rose tries to have a shot first time, but the Brighton player got back. But again, Leicester have the ball again, back in great possession. Tierney gives it to Rantler, scuttered shot. It wasn't the greatest convicted power, unfortunately. But Rantler, in terms of having the best chances for Leicester, she's been the brightest spot for the Foxes so far this afternoon. She cut inside, had a shot, scuffed it. A bit of a daisy cutter, you could say, unfortunately. No power, great direction on it, but a comfortable save for the Brighton player, who have taken a goal kick and actually gone long with it. Uh, not wanting Leicester to get instant pressure on it. They come down the right-hand side and instantly get in Leicester's half. And as I've done for the majority of it, ball's gone out of play and Leicester regain possession of the ball. As Leicester take this throw in, Rantala there has the most goals and assists for Leicester this season. She's been a dynamite in front of goal for Leicester. So not surprising she's... Feeling confident to take these chances she's had in this game on. Uh, just lacking the conviction and power in some of them. Um, but nevertheless, the biggest outlet and threat for the Foxes. 44 minutes ticking up on the board. We are down to the final minute of the first half. Leicester will be keen to try and get that first half in with a lead. But you would not want to come in a goal down with a late goal here. In the first half, but Leicester trying to put the pressure on Brighton, trying to get out their own half, and they end up crowded out and they win a soft free kick. Yeah, you know, one of those go down, feel a bit of pressure by the players, go down, and the free kick is given. This is modern day football, you wouldn't have seen that given in the 90s, but we are dwindling ever closer to the half. Time whistle still goalless here between Leicester women and Brighton women. Does Brighton have it here now? Trying to see any indication of how much extra time we had. It should be a couple of minutes here. We had a bit of brief stoppage for a minute or two at least. As a Brighton are really struggling to get the ball out. All half they struggle with this. They play around at the back and Leicester's pressure constantly causing them indecision making. They have eventually got it clear after great pressure by Tierney. Uh, forces the ball out of play. One minute. Well, I mean... You could say, oh, it's first half. There's always only ever one minute. I think there was at least two minutes taken for a free kick to be taken and other stoppages. But it is one additional minute. One last chance maybe Leicester can create. They've been given a free kick after a throw-in. Is body checked. Sam Tierney is body checked and a free kick's given. And it is... It is played all the way back to cop. Looks like both teams now... Rather getting Sophie Howard sends the ball along, getting at half time level, but Leicester might la actually launch one last attack. Is there's, there's players over here for Leicester? It's played to Dean Rose. She knocks the ball across the center box, and nobody's there to talk home. What would have been an open goal? It's taken a deflection, it's gone out for a corner. Oh, what a glorious opportunity! Dean Rose. She had the ball on the edge of the box. She played it across. It's taken the deftest of touch of either the goalkeeper or the Brighton defender. Nobody would have put it in the net, unfortunately. They weren't to know that, and it's a corner. And Randler has her arm in the air. Last chance, surely, for Leicester to take the lead at half time. And it's a and for the first time, Leicester put the ball into the box, and it is a poor one. And the Brighton goalkeeper goes down, and... And she seems to have taken a bit of a knock. She was crowded out there. But the half-time whistle goes. And that is how things are. They have stayed the same. It's been entertaining. Leicester dominating that first period of the game. But uh, as it is at half-time, it is Leicester City women nil, Brighton nil. And I am going to go for a quick commercial break. Thank you, everybody that has joined us uh, for this first half. Stay with us the second half, guys. Make sure you are like liking the video if you are new. Even if you're just popping in, you've got it on in the background. Give us a like. Give us a subscribe if you're new. This is set of subscribers only, so you'd have to subscribe to join us. So, but it is half time here. It's been a thoroughly entertaining half of football. 
but neither team able to make their early chances for Leicester and the latter chances for Brighton count. Great saves by either keeper. Cop actually ended up being the busy of the two keepers despite, despite Leicester's possession and domination in that in the majority of the first half. It is a half time for you guys. Go and go and go and water the plants. Go and get yourself a drink because I'll need one if I'm going to commentate like that in the second half. I'm going to need a glass of water, not a sponsored drink, but I do recommend going to Cornwall. St. Ives, just saying. Summer holidays are around the corner, Easter holidays first. But it is Leicester nil, Leicester City women nil, Brighton Arabia nil, and I'll see you back in a few.
Hello. 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 Sorry, you caught me out there. I was just reading uh, BBC News. Wasn't ready for you. Ah, uh, well, you see how the tables have turned, as they say. <laughs> um, oh, you, you are going to suffer, young man, for that. Oh, I know I am. I can't wait for Bristol City now. Not like Nate says here, Chris. He says, entertaining game so far. I'd say Foxes have played the better football, but Brighton have had more dangerous chances. I mean, Chris, I watched that game and and, and, and for 20-odd minutes, it was Leicester were playing like half, half court rules, weren't they? It was all in Brighton's area. I mean, Chris, what do you think of it? And it, he frustrated that the Foxes aren't, aren't potentially winning this game? I'm not. I mean, it's like watching the men, isn't it? I've written. I mean, I've written down there. I've not got many notes, but I've got first ten minutes or, or first ten minutes all Leicester. Yeah. Um, the two chance. You know, they've had a couple of chances. But they've had the, like they said. They've had the better chances. And yes. if any team probably deserves to be up at half time, it's Brighton. Because yeah, they have you had would. The better chances. Yeah, you would you would argue that because for all Leicester's great possession and fancy footwork, it's Brighton that have the well, it's Leicester's goalkeeper that's been called into more action. She made yeah. two fantastic saves down down to her right, and then that free kick, Chris, from thirty five yards out. Yes. Yeah. Oh, what, who'd be so, a commentator, eh, Chris? Because I said he won't shoot from here, and that's exactly what she did. Yeah. Well, he said he, a couple of times the commentator. Don't not sure if you're watching it in the same one as me, but. Um, he sort of said a couple of things that he's dropped himself in it. Uh, but, yeah, I, I've got to say, um, whilst we've had the most chances, it's that final pass again that's been letting us down. Yeah, it is. And, again, I said that, I said that the, the, you know, the under-23s, the, the, the WSL, the, the women and the, and the under-21s to the women all train the same as the men. And they seem to say do, yeah. do exactly the same as the men in, in, in too many literal terms. Chris, don't they? Because they, 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 they mess it up at that final third. Sometimes it's passes going astray that are costing us chances. Uh, I've noticed we are having a lot more success with Rantelar down on that right-hand side uh, than we are maybe on that left-hand side. Although Rose, Rose has that hint of frustration because sometimes she looks absolutely wonderful on the ball when she gets it, but then she seems to want to do too much. Would you, would you say that's bit, maybe, maybe a bit harsh on her or...? No, about no, I right. mean, you, you, you're going to kill me for saying this, but I think, you know, one of our best players this half has been uh, Tierney. Um, no, she has been fantastic. She has. Yeah, I would agree has. with you there. Uh, I mean, looking at a number, I presumed, I mean, she is a midfielder, but she's a defensive midfielder. But my, my God, she has been getting forward. She's really created a lot of what, what we've managed. You're going to say she's Ricky P-esque, isn't yeah. she? She can defend, yeah. she can get in the midfield and she can attack. You know why I picked her now? A great all-round player. Um, but, I mean, at the end, who wasn't blowing against the TV trying to make that ball go over the line? Um, oh, I know, right? When it came in, and, and, and the most frustrating thing is the one time Lassie didn't commit bodies to try and get on the end of it, it would have been perfect because the goal, goal was absolutely gaping. I mean, I, yeah. I was shaking my laptop trying to push it in. I don't know about you. Yeah, I know I know the way I have it set up, it shakes for you guys watching, but I was there like, oh, I but I don't I don't want to know what you were shaking on off screen. Thank you very much. Well, but, you know, all, all you need to know safety is there's no women have been involved, so it wasn't me shaking anything like that. You, no. you know, that, that, um, that, that, that's for, that's for certain. I, I think if we don't get something from this game, and I can see it being a draw still, uh as things it was stand, a draw the last time, it, mate. So it was a draw the last time when they met at Brighton. It was 2 2 there. So a draw. Well, you see, you see, there I go. Whether, whether it's going to be a 2 2. I mean, I did go for a draw and I went for 2 2 just to, to wind you up. But uh, I, I can still see it being a draw. But I think if Leicester come away not with anything from this game, one, they'll be disappointed because they have had the majority. B, they'll have to thank Cop. So they'll have to take her out for a meal because she has kept them in that game. Oh, yeah, she's made two fantastic saves. I mean, the number 11, Chris. Now, Brighton, and you know, Brighton, my manager, might be having a word with her because she she caused the chaos. She had that terrific, the, the first of the two terrific efforts for Brighton. Uh, she cut inside and, and beat how it all ends up, put her on the deck and then had that shot. But she's on a yellow card, Chris. Now, we talk about 
talk about this all the time, get in the player's head, give them all that. Do Leicester need to maybe do that? Because there was an incident where I thought it was number 11 again, but it wasn't. It was actually number 10. But the Brighton players seem a bit argumentative with this official. Is there something where, you, I know it's unsportsmanlike, but it's part of football, whether we like it or not. Maybe Leicester players go, oh, she's on the LRF. She's on the, she's on the LRF. You know, I mean, I, I saw this last. I didn't watch the whole um, game last night, uh, well, but it was happening, happening in the England game. And I think you know, I, I think you've got every right to actually just say, "Come on, ref, that's number six or whatever," you know. And uh, and the referees had quite a few long chats with a couple of the Brighton players. Yeah, she had. She had. She, in fact, I think there was one as well. Very strange. As they, uh, as only a few. Let's play so quickly. Last bit of words, Chris. You know that you know they um they were talking themselves into bookings when the free kick was given to them. When the yeah. free kick on that left hand side, and one of the Brighton players won't let anything go, trying mm. trying too hard maybe to to get a Leicester player back in the book. But um, I mean, this I mean, I, seems to be on top of things. I think she knows what she's doing. I don't think she's going to be fooled. <laughs> Famous last words. Yeah, but, what to give two dodgy penalties now? Yeah, that. but. No, she does. You know, I don't think that she's going to be pressurised into doing anything. She seems pretty much on top of the game. Yeah, it's almost like the women officials actually know what they're doing in this sport. <laughs> Maybe should be managing at a higher level. But we didn't say that, Chris. We didn't no. say that because some no, no, some no. fools out there would say otherwise. But Chris, <laughs> you've Jimmy obviously Martin. gone for the draw of your prediction. Let's hope it's not a, a not an entertaining nil nil because yes, because there are such things as an entertaining nil nil. Has I've been an entertaining there. game. Yeah, who's 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 breaking the deadlock then, Chris? Who's getting the first? Even if it ends one one, who's 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 breaking the deadlock for Brighton? For Brighton. See, there you go, everybody. Chris feels it is I just Brighton. Think, is, it, is it Sorry who's had a, a a really good game for Brighton? Uh, I cannot and... tell you purely because. I have put my wireless headphones in such a safe location that I, I cannot find them. So you can't you so, can't hear the game, then? Can you? No. So I've, well, I've got the FA, FA player, and Nate is my officiado. Yeah. He is telling me whether he can hear things or not. So I do hear glimpses of words when I'm not speaking, but I'm not paying attention to Brighton names because I'm struggling as... Ale has come off for the New Zealander CJ Bot. There is a half time substitution yeah. for the Foxes, Chris. And there both... is. I'm just seeing it now. My sound's been working fine on the FA. No, player. my sound's working fine, but obviously you can't have the audio on here, can we? So, no, no, so you unfortunately, can't. I've put my Bluetooth headphones that I was going to use. For that purpose, so I could commentate. Uh, I, I get, I get, I get you, I get you, I get you. Yes, yes. But uh, no, uh, um, sorry, has been playing very. She, I think, is the main threat. I don't think necessarily she's going to get the first goal, but everything that Brighton have, where they've really sort of tried to hurt us, has come through her. Yeah, and Leicester need to maintain that press because the best part of Leicester's pressing has actually come at Brighton's own downfall by passing mm. around at the back. It's almost like passing it out from the back doesn't work for every team as they are coming together for their last little Chris. Um, has Leicester just got to keep doing the same again, or is there anything you'd quickly change before the second half kicks off? No, I mean, you know, they, they, they dominated the first half, they have just got to be careful of that breakaway because that's what Brighton have been good at doing. Um, they just need to, to, to find that killer pass. Well, there you go, Chris. Um, hopefully, a killer pass can kill Brighton off and send the Seagulls flying back to down south. Hey, we make a good team, Ian. It's like we've been working together two years. Chris, we are literally about to get the second half on the way unless the kick off. We will see you at full time when we analyse the, uh, well, uh, the, the full time breakdown. I uh, will see you then, mate. Take care. Yeah, mate. Take care. All right. Now the. Ha oh, no. Go away. No. I said go away. Let me click it. The handsome one's back in the room on his own now. Chris is gone. And we are on the way on in this second half. It is still, as you can see, I, I hasn't changed it. I haven't had to do any work today. It's been great for me because Leicester women's nil, Brighton nil. And it's Brighton in with an early chance here. The flag's not gone up. The flag's not gone up. Leicester could be... Oh, it goes down. Flag offside. Oh, a late flag by the liner. Nearly caused disaster at the start. Um... 
Uh, Nate says, I like the player of Yuka Momoki, our number 29. Maybe not the best of halves for her, but I think she's going to be involved in the, de the break of deadlock. Nate, I agree with you. I think she's been fantastic. She's a great acquisition we got in the window, in the tran January transfer window. Um, and she's looked really good. Uh, I agree it's not been her best of halves, but she's had some fantastic games for us. She, she, she set the bar very high for Leicester. In, in, in her debut half season, if you will, because obviously she wasn't signed in the summer window. This was the January transfer window. And now Rose plays a ball four forward. Leicester looking to start the second half as they did the first half. As Ratner at the edge of the box, looks to step over, looks to cut inside, looks to drive forward. She's done too much with it. But Sam Tierney keeps the ball over the shot over. Paul Gander with a shot. From about 25 yards out, it had no accuracy, it had no power. But Leicester do have the first chance of the second half. It was great work yet again on the right by Rantler. Just when it seemed to do too much, Tierney sheared the ball for Panganda. I'm going to pronounce names wrong because I can't even say the word and Ben properly sometimes. So don't take it as offence. But Leicester have the first chance of the second half. Not the greatest, but it's a chance nonetheless. As Brighton, who are seemingly persistent with this playing it out of the back from a goal kick technique, as it's the right back who sends it to the goalkeeper, who ends up kicking it along. Answers on a postcard as to why she's done that. And a blatant shove at the back, and a Brighton player angrily remonstrates with the referee, who's been superb. Just saying, PFA, um, just, 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 if you want to get rid of these um, serial box contest winners as a referee in a men's game, maybe look at the referee because this one's been superb today. Leicester, anyway, have a free kick played short, halfway inside the Brighton half. It all goes down the right hand side to Rantler, and it's Tierney who was, well, I thought was fouled, but the referee has played advantage. And Leicester recover the ball well, and it's played all the way back to Cop. Um, uh, the ball's on the right-hand side for Leicester as Rantar, lovely intricate play, tried a lovely little one-two with Tierney, uh, but unfortunately, the Brighton player read the ball and they get a free kick, which they have taken. It was on the halfway line, but they're taking it quickly, trying to catch Leicester out in the first half. Great ball. Bailing behind the number 11 for Brighton. She's dragged the ball back to the edge of the box. The Brighton play. Oh, no, that could be a penalty. It's not given. Great challenge, Dean, by the referee. And in the end, it's all come to nothing. Absolute chaos in the box. The players stayed down for Brighton, injured, clutching her, her left shin. Not too much complaints from the Brighton players. They're not certainly not doing what the men were doing, surrounding the referee and demanding anything. There's, there is no VAR, I believe, in the women's game, even though the technology is obviously at the King Power, but because uh, most WSL sides don't play at their home ground, I don't think there's no... VAR in the women's game. It was a goal kick. Bit of heart and mouth moment. But again, Leicester. Early pressure in the second half. Coming down this right hand side. It's Rantala. It's into Minamiki. That's a great save for Brian Cooper. Oh, but the goalkeeper had to get down far to her left hand side. It was a driven low shot by Mamiki. Absolutely fantastic effort by the Japanese international. Mate, as you were saying there, you love the Japanese women's football play. Um, it was a great effort. The best chance by far for Leicester in this half. Tipped over, uh, tipped wide. Great save by the goalkeeper for Brighton. Leicester have a corner and it's taken short. And Leicester looking to get the uh, noses in front here. The ball headed down. Cleared away by Brighton. And then a looping ball into the box. Doesn't really fall for anybody. Isn't really a shot by, I think that's bot. 14. She wore that last year, actually, so it might be a different shirt number. But Leicester had a glorious chance to break the deadlock. We are 50 minutes into the game. First five minutes, just very much like the start of the second. The second half is very much like the first half. It is all Leicester at the at the moment. Uh, what did I say? A big welcome to Ellie, just a girl who loves Spurs. More credit to you. Um, I know we have lots of banter in terms of the, the men's football, but you're having a great season. We see you, as you say there. I'm a former Spurs ladies player. I want to ask if you're coming down on Sunday the 14th of April for the FA Cup semi-final match. Love to get an interview with you and other chap who left. Um, 
Oh, it's nice to have a shot here. It's deflected through. Ellie, it's absolutely wonderful. I have Twitter. It's at Full Time Focus. If you follow me on Twitter and message there, I will try and be available for you. Um, I'm, because I don't live in Leicester. But it, I, if I'm able to get to Leicester and go, I will be there at the game. Um, but yes, um, Ali, contact me on um, on, on Twitter. The Twitter handle is down below. I'll, I'll quickly put it up there so you can see it going across the bottom. It's at Full Time Focus. The link to my YouTube and all that is down below. Uh, thank you very much for that. It would be great to get an ex WSL player uh, uh, from any club. And Level it doesn't have to be WSL, could be the, the divisions um below, it doesn't matter, it'd be brilliant. Um, so yeah, get in contact with me there on Twitter and and the, the other chap, Chris, if you need a name for him, his details are also there. Uh that is absolutely brilliant. Uh Ellie, that'd be great. Uh, and it'd be great to have you on here. We will be in discussion. If I can't get there to the game, we'll have you on for a preview show. That'd absolutely be brilliant because uh that's what I'll be doing now on. I'm fully kicking into the WSL YouTube live for Leicester, and it'd be great to have you on and get a player's perspective of of um of what you think of the cup tie. Um, cheers to that, Ellie. Thanks for the follow and thanks for the subscription to the channel. I've seen a few of you have subscribed to the channel today. That means the world to me. And if you could smash a like on the video, that would be even better. Uh, fortunately, not much else happening here. Just as I say that, Leicester breaking up at the edge of the box. It is Diane Rose. Or Diane, Diane. I'm going to say it wrong all my life. Um, they have the ball on the right-hand side, Leicester. Working the ball nicely here. As the ball goes into the box, flick on by Tierney, out wide to Rantala, who plays the ball back. She's looking for a ball in. Tierney there, right hand side, digs in across. The Brighton defender gets a vital block to stop it going across the uh, the, the box. Um, and that is a corner to Leicester, I believe. Great work again by Chris's player of the match at half time. Um, uh, Hello to you, uh, Abel, Peter. Um, great on 1.5. Uh, I, I, you'd have to tell me what you mean by that. But across into the box for Leicester, have been dangerous on corners. Comes into the box. Oh dear, that's high, wide, and not at all handsome there from Leicester. Edge of the box, cleared out to the right hand side. First time shot. Didn't exactly go to plan. I'm sure she's working on that in the training ground, but. That may end up in the hotel, uh, in the uh, hotel behind the King Power. It was hit that high and wide. It might be in their car park. So if you're walking past the uh, is it a holiday inn outside the King Power and a ball's just hit you in the face, send it back to the King Power and our apologies. Because <laughs> that was very high, wide and handsome. The Brighton goal kick, not pressured this time by Leicester, but they have won it here. Minamiki, she's got the ball. She does some dribbling. Great ball for Rancher. His face is strong. Again, again, Rantler's firing into the top corner. It's a goal for Leicester City. They've broken the deadlock here at the King Power. It's a great play, play by Leicester. They pressed hard just like they did in the first half. The ball was picked up by Miramiki. The Japanese international played a superb ball for Ranta. And this time she was free. She made no mistake. She funded the ball into the top right-hand corner to give Leicester the lead. A fantastic goal. It's Leicester City 1, Brighton have Albion 0. Leicester have the lead the second half deserves. What a strike it was. They keep had absolutely no chance. I wish I had gold music to play for you, but you just have to make do with limbs in the living room. Hashtag limbs in the living room. Get it trending. There you go. A goal for the Foxes. That gives them the lead they well and truly deserve. It was a thunderous shot by Rantala. Uh, and there we go, folks. We have a goal in the game. So I now have to, you ready? Just build up with dramatic effect. Oh, no, no, don't, because I'm going to type in everything there. So I, I can't hold my breath. Um, but there we go, folks. On the, what are they officially giving it? I'm going to give it at 55 minutes. 55 minutes. Rantala has scored. So they oh no, I have typed that in so wrong. Give me a second, guys. It's one nil to the foxes. 
Rantala with the goal. And Leicester have their deserved lead that the pressure of the first half, um, on the second half, sorry, warranted. It was great press there by, um, have I done that right? There you go. It's Leicester, Leicester women won, Brighton women nil. Rantala on the 55th minute. Again, great ball. Great press from Mamiki, the Japanese international, Nate's favourite player, my favourite signing of the season. Although Brighton have a chance to get that level straight away here as Cop. Well, brilliant goalkeeping by Cop. Brighton suddenly had the ball forward. They suddenly had the ball right in Leicester's box. They were looking to make it 1 1 and strike well back. It was a number 22 for Brighton. She turned the defence easy. Cop read it, came straight out, nearly got a hand to it. Uh, uh, I don't know why I'm in. <laughs> now you know why I'm where I am in the predictions league. Well, Chris, you predicted Brighton to take the lead, and of course, it strikes you back like that, mate. Uh, Nate, it was a fantastic goal. Uh, as Brighton are set to make a double change here, looking to stir things up, going a goal behind. Uh, Mamiki, Nate, you're correct with the assist. Number nine. Cesare is coming. Uh, no, it's number 17's coming off for Brighton. I haven't seen the subs. I'm going to wait for them to come up on the screen, folks. 57 minutes in. It's Pinto coming off and Haley number 21, coming on for Brighton. Just before this corner is about to be taken. Maybe, and then, yeah, Cesare's come off the number seven, number nine. Guillaume Min. Guillaume Min. I've probably done better pronouncing that name than I have anyone else. Um, cross comes in. Brighton have an old oh, scramble, scramble, middle of the box, and in it goes. It was, Chris, an absolute fantastic assist. Fooled everybody. I'm not saying anything, mate. You, you're the, you, you did that yourself, not me. As Brighton now trying to get an instant reply. But Mamiki, what a brilliant defensive work she's doing. Ellie, it's going to be an epic occasion, historic for both our clubs. I'm a born and bred Tottenham. Lads and Spurs women's ambassador on behalf of her, of her games too, Ellie. That is wonderful news. It's wonderful to hear that you're 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 so passionate about both sides of the football, just like I am on my co-host Chris, who is the LTID TV One representative there. Uh, and if you if you're new to this channel and you haven't heard of LTID TV One, do go and show that support. And uh, that's the men's side of things, and as along with other things, Chris does an amazing amount of work there. Um. You know, it's it go and show support to that, Ellie. Like I said, you sound like an amazing person. You've got so much knowledge of the game. You do for both sides. So to make sure you are not just following me and Chris, but you're contacting us as a ball into the boxes, easily collected by cop. And would love to have you. I would love to have you on the show to preview the FA Cup semi final game. So I'm glad that you've given us both a follow, and I'm looking forward to potentially having you on a show later in the month. Um, not much going on at the moment. Leicester are casually having at the back, trying to take the sting out of Brighton, who are trying to rally and get themselves back in this game. It's a bit head tennis at the moment. Chris, just in person, of Steve Larnick, reverse psychology. I think so. It's Leicester trying to break now here. Go to the comments corner, but Rantala could be in for a second here. The defence haven't cleared it well. She tries to play a ball through. Doesn't quite get there. But again, Leicester's constant pressure keeps it off, keeps it on. Deanne Rose, I'll learn to say her name. She tried to get a ball in the cross in the box, but Brighton do clear it. But again, constant pressure by Leicester. Mamiki has the ball for the Foxes on this left-hand side. Deanne Rose keeping the ball. Great ball into the box. Looped header goes out for a corner. Leicester regaining control of the game. Sorry, off after I said she was the main threat. I'm going to start doing Tiddly Winks watch alongs. Yeah, you'd still flicking get it wrong, wouldn't you? Flicking get it. I'll shut up. I'll stick to my job. Uh, Rantala causing problems. Mamiki causing problems. Leicester looking to um, to put this game out of Brighton's reach. Although they were two all up in the reverse picture at Brighton early in the season at four, uh, for, for 81 minutes, and they did draw that game. So I wouldn't rule anything out if they did get a second, but Leicester's early second-half pressure seeming to want to tell. Um, as Leicester's ball into the box again, scramble clears Brighton, try to 
Try to clear the lines and break here. Looking to get back on level terms. The ball's played out right. Leicester's defender tried to get there first, but she's not. She's been beaten to it. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant recovery work by CJ Box. She does absolutely fantastic. Not only does she recovering and stop Brighton pressing, you can't even get that right, mate. No, you can't. She got beaten initially here, did Box. She can get her body in front of it. And then not only, um, oh no, she didn't. I thought I thought she'd done just enough uh, uh, to stop it going in. But uh, it's going out for a corner, but it's not. It's a Brighton corner. Neither team's been really... No, let's go! Oh no! It's bundled in! Just as I commentated, cursed it. Leicester looked like they'd initially cleared the danger. Brighton headed it back in across uh, back into the danger area no foul given i thought there might have been a foul in the build up but it wasn't given Clock. oh is it an own goal i think that should have been given as a foul the the ball was crossed in Cop had it underneath her. The Brighton player put under pressure. Now, I know goalkeepers are put under bubble wrap. Uh, thank you, Ali. That is amazing to hear. But I think that's a foul. Me, personally, that was a foul and a half. As Leicester make uh, uh, a change. They're making a double change. I'm trying to keep an eye on everything. Here, as I write down, I'm going to say 61 minutes. Rose is coming off. I haven't seen the Brighton goal scorer. If somebody can tell me the goal scorer, uh, that would be much greater. More for my notes. Whelan Peterman. Peterman on. And I didn't see the other substitution. I know uh, Rose came off, but I didn't see who came on. But we are all level here at the King Power. I agree fan, brilliantly with Chris here. It was a foul. Uh, Cover the ball. She's underneath. She, she notices her over. How is it not a goal? Leicester looking to strike right back. They're reminiscing of the referee, restraining with the referee, saying that's persistent fouling um, by the Brighton player. I believe it was a foul. I don't think it would have stood. The referee's seen it differently. Uh, I'll give it a chance to catch up with Ellie's comments here. Gary Lincoln was fabulous, and we gave you Harry Winks. Not not such fair deals. I feel we got the better of that one. I love Lincoln scoring two goals. This is Arsenal and not one F Cup Fanny final. Uh, yeah, brilliant. Great player for both. I mean, Winks was further down the line, but he is definitely the championship's best player this season by a mile, at least. So, in terms of what he's doing in his early career at Leicester, I'm more than happy with the deal as Lysander, the captain of Brighton, booked. Um, finally booked. Uh, as Leicester have this free kick in, 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 in the same sort of area that um that Ellie did and, 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 and so Ellie's because she's on the screen. Thank you very much. I, I am trying my best for you guys. And of course, as I was saying about the officials, she goes and gets that one wrong. We're ball into the box with a free kick in the face. Everybody, not a blue shirt or a green and black shirt could get on the end of it. Uh, and it safely goes through for Brighton out for uh for a goal kick. And unfortunately, guys, if you still if you are just joining and you think Leicester are winning one nil. Um, I need somebody to potentially tell me who the Brighton goal scorer is because, in my infinite wisdom, I do not have a um, I do not have headphones, so I struggle to hear what I am without causing problems. Um, I'm going to put it down at 62 minutes of goal again. I might. I'll just tell you what I do for you, lovely people. Is I'll just put that for now. And lo and behold, the comments come in, and I bet you it's um, who scored it. Ailey, the substitute scored the goal. Gordon Bennett, uh, the substitute. Well, talk about super sub. 
Talk about a super sub, an instant impact. Whether it should have counted or not remains to be seen. However, that is the situation at the moment. Seven minutes, I've got it down here as give or take a few minutes um, for that. But it only took less, it's, uh, less than seven minutes to surrender the lead. Uh, and what has been an, an impactful and an explosive second half. Thank you, Nate, for telling us that. Um, and Nate is uh, is saying the same as I do. Thanks, Harry Winks. He's been brilliant for us. You've also got matters from us. There's been a few players over the time that have played for both Tottenham and for Leicester. We've got a, a somewhat decent history with them. Still don't forgive them for the Wormington Cup final. Um, but I suppose Robbie Savage got um, just in Edinburgh. Rest in peace, that man. Uh, sent off uh, that day. So I suppose it all evened itself out. And uh, they haven't won much since, have they, really? Just just, just jiving in there. there. But anyway, back to the football now. I've caught a wee lovely lot. Rantala, send, uh, it receives a ball, but it's pinged into a way, way too too hard and uh, Leicester unable to capitalise. And uh, Brighton are taking taking themselves with a stride here. They are well in, you know, well on top at this moment. Their, their tails are wagging since getting back level in this game. They they have, um, I just need a drink here. They have uh, had seen a lot more of the ball. Um, again, whether you think they should be level or not, is up for debate. I personally think anything like that, it's a foul on the goalkeeper in today's football regardless. But the referee didn't deem it. And that's why it is. You won't know, will you? Like, brother, how do I know it's 1-1? One, one? You haven't shown me anything? Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, dear, an absolute horror show. Brighton have the lead, and it's an absolute comedy of errors. Pop took the goal kick. It was driven low to half. The ball was then played straight in behind. Cop couldn't get back in. She tried to take the, the goal score out. But, oh, dear, oh, dear, and now. Empty net. Easiest goal. They will score all day. And in the blink of an eye, Brighton have the lead. I wasn't prepared for it, as you can tell, with, with the fact that I wasn't expecting it. And 68 minutes now. Brighton have turned this game on its head. 68 minutes played. It is now... I need to figure it out. I know it's a number 22. But they put the score up and they don't put who scored the goals up. Well done, FF player. So, again, Nate will probably tell me whilst I quickly put it up. But Brighton... Oh, in just over 10 minutes, I've turned this game on the head. Leicester had the lead, as you can, as, as you can see there, by Rantala, but a goal by Ailey and a second, uh, the easiest goal you will score all game. Thank you very much, Nate. Mrs. Robinson, as the song would go, has the easiest of goals you will ever score in your life. An empty net, a poor goal kick. To be fair, and Brighton are trying to make 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 this easier for themselves. They are all over less now. If they weren't rattled by the first goal, they really are rattled by Brighton's quick fire double here. And so it is now Leicester women, Leicester City women one, Brighton women. Two and this result would actually see the foxes and the seagulls switch places in the league before kickoff. There was two points separating them. It now will be Brighton will have a one point advantage over them, and Leicester and Brighton, like I said, would probably switch places. Well, they would switch places in terms of Brighton would go ahead of them. So now, well, Leicester were in a position of power. They were one and up through Rantelos. Absolute peach of a finish after a great assist from uh, Mamiki. But, oh, the tide has well and truly turned and the Seagulls have their feathers up. And I'm going to stop making all these awful puns here because 
an absolute horror show has gifted Brighton uh, a lead. And a lead at half time, even Chris said you want a begrudge them having, but the way the second the, the start of the second half started, it looked like one team was going to score and indeed did, and then go on to get a second goal. But as it is now, we're at the halfway mark of the second half, 70 minutes played, and it is now Brighton who have the lead, and they now have 20 minutes to hold on to what would be a huge three points in the WSL. And this game is suddenly opened up like crazy. Leicester giving the ball away, Brighton giving the ball away. Brighton now have it after Leicester looked to launch an attack. 71 minutes gone here at the King Power. It is Leicester City winning one. Brighton two was nearly in for three there, but the ball just evaded the Brighton striker. The number 11 um, nearly getting on the end of things there. Uh, chaos has ensued here at the King Powers. You know, three goals in the space of 30 minutes of football. And we've gone from winning the game to drawing the game to now losing this game. Leicester have just over 20 minutes, just under 20 minutes to find their way back into this game and try to get a result from a losing position. Now, Chris's Desmond doesn't sound like a bad idea. It really is a chance here. As the number nine for Brighton, the substitute uh, Min, uh, but well, again, I know the official may have got it wrong for their first goal, but Brighton player gets booked for obstructing a quick taken free kick. Maybe the referee in the whole game uh, could have learned from that. As Leicester have made another substitution, uh, Takarada has come on for, for Pelganda, who hasn't um, really done much in this game. She had that high, wide and horrible chance at the very start of the second half. But Leicester here, instantly trying to make a chance count as um, Randler crosses the ball into the box. It falls to the box, but Brighton make a great interception, although they kick it at their own player, and Leicester win it back. Fortune favours the Brave as Leicester's pressure plays up again. Randler, the goal scorer, got Leicester ahead in this game, gives it to Tierney on a 100th appearance. She's got it down in the box! Nothing given! Goal referee! Lord know somebody, and ball offside, penalty, goal kick, play on, whatever, something's going on here, it's playing on, I thought it was a foul, I thought she'd been held down, wasn't allowed back up, but Leicester, desperately putting on the pressure here on Brighton, trying to get themselves back level in the game, they once led, um, but here we are, uh, no foul given there, referee allowing play on, it is CJ Bott, who's won Leicester a throw in here, the game is going too quick for Leicester and not quick enough for Brighton. Um, flying through the minutes here. We're nearly at 74 minutes now as Brighton changes going thick and fast for both sides. Um, I don't know if the women's football is the same as the men in the rules of five because both teams, I believe, have made three substitutes, three substitutes now. Um, Brighton making their third as we speak. Um, Leicester have made theirs, I believe, because Tucker is on. Uh, so Leicester made three subs. Brighton have made three subs. Um, the captain has come off. That is a strange one. You very rarely see the captain come off. Um, yeah, Leicester pressure building. Uh, on this right-hand side, uh, numbers there for Leicester. Uh, Takahira asks for the ball, but it's given to Tinney, who gets clipped, and it's actually a great challenge in the end. Half a second later, and it was uh, Tinney would have gone down. It would surely have been a penalty, but it's actually a really well-timed uh, challenge. But Leicester now have a corner kick here. Um 15 minutes to go plus stoppage time. Can Leicester find a way back into this game? A game, I remind you, they were winning for a brief period of time. Another scramble in the box. Nothing given. Shot drilled in. Did it hit a Brighton player or a Leicester player? I can't tell. But chaos in the box. And then, oh, it comes to absolute nothing. Chaos uh, uh, has calmed. And it is a Brighton goal kick. Ellie comes back in here and says, we've got four or five outstanding players. Beth England, of course. Gracie Clinton on loan from Man United, who's smashing it. Mark, 
Martha Thomas and our uh, uh, Scott Stryker and Celine Bizit and Ash Neville. Yeah, you've got a great squad. We were unfortunate against you um, last time out. We lost 1-0, I believe, against you in the league. And I think we drew in the season. It's going to be interesting. Oh, my God, Brighton through here. Brighton to make it 3-1 and seal the game. But the flag has gone up for offside. Gordon Bennett linesman, just call it. Don't wait for a goal. I hate that rule because the linesman just didn't flag until the ball hit the net. Otherwise, it was game over and it was 3 1 to Brighton. Lovely play down the left. Leicester's line was pushed to its limits, but the Brighton player is so annoying. It is five subs. Thanks, Nate. Just confirming you believe it's five subs. But the officiate in here has changed on its head. The goal for me still shouldn't stand. I'll argue that and I will die on this hill, as, as, as Nippon once said. If you know Nippon, you know I'm on about. Um, but why are you not raising the flag as soon as he's off, as soon as they're offside? Uh, Zikatoni Alimi has gone into the book. The number 10 has gone into the book for Brighton. Let's have a free kick halfway inside Brighton's half on the right hand side. 13 minutes left to play. We're just hitting the 77th minute mark for Leicester. Desperately trying to find a way back into the game. Uh, sorry, I can't do my 13 minutes left, not 17. As the ball's back, it's ready to box. Right, they're trying to get space to create a shot, but she can't. She's getting crowded out. Leicester trying to get themselves back into the game. Ramika shot deflected by Brighton getting players all behind the ball. They are doing the old 10 player behind the ball routine as the ball goes into the box. CJ Bot tries to get there, but it is cut clear by the Brighton player. Again, only to a Leicester player. And Takadiri can't stop it going out for a throw into Brighton. Um, but there we go. We have a throw in just deep inside Brighton's own half, just past the edge of the box, you'd say. On as as Brighton attacking down that side, it's it's their left hand side, Leicester's right. Um, there is the crowd are willing Leicester on clappers banging, crowd cheering. Leicester advantage played. Why? How is it an advantage played? But Leicester do get the ball back. It was clearly going to go to a Brighton player. The referee played advantage. It's just about say the brush is working in her favour. As Leicester try and play the ball forward, but Brighton have every player behind the ball. They are not going to surrender this lead as time is slowly ticking away here at the King Power. It is still a Leicester women one, Brighton women two. As you can see there, in case you don't know the players, Leicester did have the lead. They were one goal to the good after Rantless thunderous shot hit the top corner of the net, roof the net, but a quick brace by um, Brighton, substitute Haley and then Robinson. Scoring the goals to give Brighton this 2-1 advantage as Leicester trying to unlock the Brighton back door. Parking the bus as it is. Everybody behind the line doing the job for Brighton. Trying to preserve this lead. Edge of the box. Shot! Oh, for God's sake, it was always rising. Shot. It was such a tame effort. It was high and over the bar from Rantala. It was always going over, lent back, took the shot, didn't get herself over the ball. As Leicester make their fourth change, yes, Nate, you can confirm there is five subs allowed in the WSL. Coming on, I believe it's Peter Petterman. No, it's Simesman, who's had some injury trouble since joining Leicester, but it has scored. And it is Green coming off for Leicester with just over 10 minutes plus injury time to go. The Foxes will be absolutely fuming now if they do not find a way to take something from this game, a game that they were fairly in control of for the majority of the first half and initially had the lead, now fighting to try and break down the parked bus that is Brighton and is parked well and truly on that pair, trying to make sure that Leicester will not pass and in all fairness to Brighton, despite the early chances in the second half, you'd say that both sides are probably even on, on, on clear-cut chances created despite Leicester's control throughout the majority of this game. But time is against Leicester and on Brighton's side. It is 
Getting down to that final 10 minutes we are into now. And Cop has the ball for Leicester with a goal kick. No playing it out from the back from the Foxes. It's flicked on by Brighton head back into their own half. And now they're trying to come forward with it. They've got the ball. Leicester trying to create pressure, trying to take the ball and trying to win it fairly in that midfield. But they don't. But they're trying to clear it up here. Sophie Howard with a brave header out for a throw-in. Brighton have a dangerous throw-in here on their left-hand side. Coming down the left. And uh, oh, they're taking a day and an age to get the ball. No surprise. Every team does this when they hold on to a lead. The substitutes doing it with a new throw down the left-hand side to the number nine for Brighton. Who tricks and turns, but Leicester have plays around her and numbers back and clear the danger. And a missed kick from a Brighton player lets Simpson get the ball. She wins Leicester a free kick. But Brighton trying to block the short free kick and managed to do it barely according to the referee. Leicester now trying to build up a play, get their foot on the ball, try and get a bit of a uh, hold of the ball, keep the ball for a bit and play the ball in. As I say that, they launch it long down the right-hand side and Brighton get it away. But again, middle of the park, Leicester win it. But it's a bit of her tennis. And Brighton here, ready to try and just hit Leicester on the counter and get everybody behind the ball to preserve this lead, which would be a huge three points for Brighton. Neither side in trouble with relegation, but if either of them were to make a late dash for potential European spots, however unlikely uh, it may seem, this is the way they're going to have to do it. They're going to have to win games like this. And at the moment, unfortunately for the Foxes, it is Leicester winning that as a hefted clearance is bounced off the head of a Leicester player, of a Brighton player, sorry, and it gives Leicester back possession. They need to slow things down here. Yes, time is against them. We are 82 and a half minutes into this game. But they need to go back to what they know best. Be patient. Play some lovely football. As I say that, can I talk it into existence? Rancelos cross into the box. And play everybody on the little fell back post. It's just put over. Oh, it was originally missed. I don't know who by, but Tierney, I believe it was. Play the ball down to Rantala. Cross into the right hand side. And substitute Simpson missed a header, and oh, I, I don't know if it's Takamira or or if it's Mamiki who was behind Simpson. She didn't really anticipate uh, missing the header. It just missed Simpson's header, and she she wasn't reacted to it, and it blazed over the bar. But a glorious chance goes begging for the Foxes to get themselves back level in this game. Now then, the Japanese international, Mamiki, wins the ball in the middle of the park for Leicester. It's played from Howard out wide onto the left-hand side. Leicester get the ball into the half, but they've returned it back just inside their own half. Leicester being patient, doing what it is. It was good win, wasn't it? Uh, Nate, thanks very much for that. Um, Rantala, loads it off. The ball's in the box! It's in! It's level! It's level! They've got it! It's great through ball in! Leicester level! And it's a rental. It's a rental. It's the one that's number nine. What a goal! Leicester level! They've done it! They managed to find a way through and break the Bristol resistance. It was 10 players behind the ball for Bristol, but it will not stop Leicester getting level. Won by the other Japanese international, Takadari. She played a superb, perfect pinpoint through, ball through. I believe it's a number nine for Leicester, which I believe is Peterman. Peterman, she's got the goal. She gets the goals. Magic, magic, Peterman. It's 2-2. Two, two, and Leicester are trying to come forward and cast them out. It was, was it Mamiki? I thought it was the number 15, Nate. I thought it was Takadari. I thought it was her. Um, they're both similar in the middle of the pitch, but if it is, it's another assist from Mimi Mimiki. Remember, 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 Mimiki. Oh, Brighton now had a chance to make it 3 2. Oh, my God! 85 minutes, not even 30 seconds, and Brighton goes down the other end to make it 3 2. Oh, my days. What is going on? I don't even have a chance to put 2 2 and say that Leicester are back in it. Oh, it's 3-2 to Brighton. Oh, 
Oh, dear, what a game we are being treated to. And no sooner were Leicester back level than a lovely ball themselves played in, controlled down. The Leicester, it was hit first time. And Brighton are back ahead. No sooner than Leicester put pegged them back level. Oh, at 83, my head's fried. My head's fried. So, 83 and then 80, 84. And there's still time for Leicester to get a third and pull the back level. There is going to be some added on time. We're into the last four minutes of Leicester trying to come forward. I haven't even finished typing up Brighton's. Fifth, a, a, a third goal, the fifth of the afternoon. What a second half I have been treated to. Unfortunately for Leicester, it is a half that they are still losing despite only seconds ago being pe pegging Brighton back level. I'm just going to currently put the Brighton's third goal score down as Brighton. As Nate, I need you and your infinite wisdom to go. You're right, take it here, but now no time to celebrate. Exactly, mate. Um, Nate, who scored that third goal for Brighton? You are my man. You are my outlet post. Because I was so busy celebrating Leicester getting back level. I hadn't even finished my celebrations. And Brighton had, had, had got themselves back in front as an attack down the left-hand side. The ball is overhit and too much for the Leicester player to get on the end of. And Brighton have a goal kick. And they are going back to um, Turland. Oh, she scored in the reverse fixture, actually. She got both the goals in the 2-2 draw. So, shock, horror that she has come on and, you know, she scored here for Brighton. She got both goals, ironically enough, in the 82nd and 88th minute in the reverse fixture. So, I'm not surprised that she's had an impact in the result here. Obviously, still time, although it is now really ticking away for Leicester to get an equaliser. And what a game you are being treated to here. It's Leicester City women three, Brighton uh, over Albion women. Uh, sorry, Leicester City women two. I wish it was three, but it is Leicester City women two, Brighton and uh, Albion women three. Goals by Rantler and Pe Peterman. Uh, seem to have earned Leicester a point. Rantle put in the Foxes' head, but then two quick fire goals from Haley and Robinson had the Seagulls in the driving seat, only for Peterman after a, a superb through ball by Takamiri. Um, got Leicester level, but before you could say that sentence, Brighton went straight down the other end. A great ball into the box, well chested down by the Brighton attacker, and a first time shot for. Driven low and hard, got in behind, and Cop couldn't get there to save it. And in a blink of an eye, Brighton were back in front. They were not. They're looking now not to be denied the three points. And number eleven, who who's through here for Leicester, defensive recover as well. And Clermont's. Oh my gosh, this has been a chaotic game of football. Oh, I have not been able to draw breath in this game. Fantastic game for the neutral. My art, uh, how Chris does this, I don't know. Because this has been a phenomenal second half to watch. Unfortunately, uh, for Leicester, time very much against them. We have just ticked past the 87th minute. Less than three minutes to go. There is going to be a lot of stoppage time, I imagine. If nothing purely for the amount of goals we have had all coming in this half of football. For for both sides, a, a five-goal thriller. Unfortunately for Leicester, despite their performance throughout this in, in game you know Brighton are the ones with the the third, three out of the five goals as um Leicester will be looking yet again trying to create a chance to get themselves back level and although you could sit here and say that Leicester deserves something from this game some sloppy defending has ultimately cost Leicester and of course a dubious first goal for a foul on the keeper not awarded. But this is football, folks. This happens and you have to take what is given to you with a pinch of salt. And unfortunately, Leicester were not able to deal with uh, Leicester, uh, with Brighton's spell of dominance in the hour to 70-minute mark. And despite Peterman uh, getting Leicester back lever, Turland 
who scored both goals in the reverse fixture. There is six minutes added on, six minutes to save a result. Turland's goal separating the two clubs at the moment. Um, both Japanese internationals have the assist. We need some more magic from somewhere. But it's Brighton trying to counter, doing exactly what any team would do in the situation, sitting back and trying to hit you on the counter. They know Leicester have to go for it. They know Leicester will not want to lose this. Again, Brighton will um, swap, will change places with Leicester in the league. And although both clubs will be are, are far clear of relegation um, at the moment, only one spot, remember, when one team goes gets relegated from the WSL and sitting in that spot, Currently, 10 points uh, adrift of Leicester um, are, are, are Bristol City. They have six points and, well, Leicester have 16, so 10 points. So no fear of relegation, but drawing games like this, even though given the situation, will be seen as points dropped, especially when you, uh, you say that Leicester controlled that first half and initially took the lead. Um, a great tackle there by the Leicester defender, uh, midfielder Takamira, but it could. Um, okay, Ellie, thanks for that. I, I won't pop the comment up because some people might be weirdos. I'm just saying, I'm not saying you lovely lot are, but some people are. But I appreciate that. Um, I will. Um, I will definitely check that out after the end of this. Uh, I am hoping for a Leicester equaliser. We are in, through two of the six minutes added on. Brighton, every player behind the ball, looking to only counter-attack Leicester if the opportunity presents themselves, not taking any risks. Leicester found a way through them once, but tired legs seemingly going to give Brighton a chance to kill the game off here. The number 25, it's Lens with a middle shot. Tame effort, Cop this time can get there. Um... Um, but um, there we go. It is still end to end game. Leicester desperately trying to grab what they would feel is a point they have deserved. Um, uh, but we are now coming into the closing last three and a half minutes. It's with the Brighton goalkeeper who sends her kick long up the field. Like I said, it's back to the job wall. Brighton putting the wall up, they're parking the bus on the pier. Uh, Leicester trying to get in as they did before with Peterman on 84 minutes when they initially got back level for about three and a half seconds. Um, however, Takarada, advantage played for Leicester. They're coming down this left hand side, driving into the middle, played out left to Simon Simpson, cross into the middle. Nobody there but a Brighton player. Look at. Goodwin delivers a ball in and it's a flick on head by Peter Men, but it goes harmlessly wide. You're welcome, Ali. You are welcome. Uh, it's gone harmlessly wide um, to the frustration of Peter Men and the Fox's teammates. Um, Leicester, though, will be hoping, hoping to be able to create one last chance and take a point from a game which you can't argue uh, they wouldn't deserve. There is, we are into the last minute of time, but there should be time added on for this time as a Brighton player uh, clearly has a broken leg, is being down, and they're going to kill off some more time here making a substitution. All right, mate, no need to clap right next to her. Gordon Bennett, what is that from manager? Manager sat there clapping a substitute right next to her. I'd be like, mate, I'm only just coming on the pitch. Leave me alone. Let me focus. But, a minute left of the additional time. However, the Leicester players will be wanting this second uh, this to continue. They are still a goal down. Brighton manager doesn't seem to understand what his technical box is all about. Why are you talking to an official? Get get off the pitch, mate. Get off the pitch. Oh, convenient rule breaking. Get off the pitch. Get the assistant out of the way as well, you tar. Get out of it. God, I hate managers when they play like that. Who do you think you are, Jose Mourinho? Um, Colbert comes on for Maguin. Uh, Brighton making one last change, uh, to try and see out the time. We have, according to the clock, played 95 minutes, but there is surely two or three minutes here to be played on, different around with the injury and the substitutions. Um, should see Leicester have enough time to maybe create one last chance, it's all they will get. 
as the uh, time ticks away. Um, Leicester need to get the ball here, and they do it with Sancho. A lovely ball in! Ramsdale could get there! She could get in! Oh, what a save! What a save! Celebrates like a win, and they can't blame them. That could be the save that keeps the points going back with the Seagulls. It was a ball through. The defender couldn't get a cleared block on it. Ran to a thunder a shot, but what a save by the Brighton keeper. And Leicester do have a corner. Last chance saloon. The last chance for Leicester to take a point from the game they would deserve. Shot comes in, it's blocked, and Brighton to clear, and that could be it. This official doesn't want to seem to add much more on. We are now officially on the timer. Played six minutes. There should be an extra minute or two. Although Brighton look to break Leicester hearts and completely kill this entertaining game off. They have won a throw in deep in Leicester's half. And as the six minutes have been played on the clock, there should be an extra minute or two play here for... I don't want the same time wasting because I never like to say about an injury, but the time it take, took for an injury and substitutes and, and the manager to give it all that to a to an official as Brighton take it into the corner. But Leicester are trying to get it clear. And again, despite the efforts of Leicester players, they're keeping it well in the corner. You don't have to like it. I don't like it, but it is what it is. It's sportsmanship. You do what it is to win a game of football and see the see the game out. We've now played seven minutes. I they played seven minutes. Brighton spent a minute or two on the deck. Can Leicester launch one last chance to go? They have won a free kick. Leicester looking to take it quickly. They need to move it quickly. It needs to get up the field. Rantler, has her chance been the one? Has that save been the one that will see Brighton take three points back to them with to the Seagulls? Well, it certainly looks that way there. A poor ball out of Taney. She couldn't control it. And Brighton have a throw in at the halfway line. And we've not much left to go. Time surely ticking away. It looks like Brighton will be taking the points back with them to the seaside. A whistle goes. Some for you thought it was a full-time whistle with the referee. 97 minutes and 10 seconds. There's got to be only a couple of seconds left. Cock gets the ball. He plays it out wide. Can Leicester, will they be allowed to? No, they will not be allowed to make one last chance. And a fantastic save in stoppage time by the Brighton goalkeeper. A fantastic save. Denied Rantala the chance to snatch a point for the Foxes. But unfortunately, in a game... That had it all. It had goals. It had goal mouth scrambles. It had everything you could ask for. But unfortunately for the Foxes, it didn't have the result. It has finished at the King Power. The full time whistle officially blows. It is finished. Leicester City women two. Brighton Albion women three. And unfortunately, it is a defeat. And it was. You know, snatched from the jaws of victory. Rantley gave Leicester the lead, but then a dubious goal was awarded for Brighton, despite a foul, it seemed, on the goalkeeper. Substitute Haley got from Brighton level, and then Robinson, uh, in the 68th minute, uh, put Brighton ahead. It looked like they would see it out until a fantastic ball from Leicester's Japanese international, number 15, Takadiri. Played in Peterman, who lashed the ball home. But before I could finish, limbs in the kitchen and celebrating. Unfortunately, Turland, who scored both the goals in the first fixture that did finish 2 2, had snatched a winner in a game that looks destined to end all levels. I'm just seeing the highlights. It has finished here at the King Power. Leicester, unfortunate, as Nate says, unfortunately, full foul to a defeat in what was one of the most entertaining second halves I have seen. So I'm just seeing their equaliser here. I'm sorry, it's a foul on the goalkeeper. She backs into her. She just backs into her. That's a foul on the goalkeeper. Justice, there you are. Where were you? Where were you, Christmas? Sorry, I went off on a tangent there. But hey oh, it is what it is. Petterman thought she'd rescued a point for the Foxes, but Turlan scored no less than a second well, literally, it felt like a second later. And that was her third goal against the Foxes in both outs. And she scored two late goals to earn them a joint at Seagulls. 
They had a point there. They are taking a point, all three points this time, back with them from the King Power. Stay tuned, though, folks, because while the game is over, this show is not over. I'm going to go water the plants and make myself a drink. And Chris should be here any minute to join us. And we're going to break down that unfortunate defeat for the Foxes. I, like I will, Chris, I will see you shortly.
Well, that that's awkward pose for me to have been frozen on. I hope I'm moving. Uh, can you guys hear me? Because my, my camera's frozen my end. I don't know why. Um, I don't I'm know here. why my camera's... Hello. Hello. Hello, my camera's frozen my end. Apparently I'm 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 holding my phone, so I'm gonna come off camera because I don't like if he's got me frozen showing me until until it unfreezes and I know what's going on. It's, it's it, I don't know, Chris. I don't know why it's done that to me. I actually don't. I, I I didn't I I put my phone down and don't come on camera with it, but Chris, an enthrilling second half had everything in it up, down. Uh, left, right, whatever you want to say about it, goals galore, cruel, cruel outcome. But don't take your chances in that first half. Stuff for the consequences, Chris. I guess. You know, it's one of those questions, isn't it? Uh, spot the difference, men teams, women's team. You know, it, it seems mm. to be the same. I mean, you know, I think we can. Uh, I mean, the, the, I was going, about to say you can see we're missing Willie Kirk on the sidelines, but. A uh, substitution made got us back into the game, uh, but yeah, you know, you can't think. Well, that's it now. We're gonna, you know, we, we can switch off. You just can't switch off. Um, and look, you know, Brighton have gone above us now. We're down in ninth. Uh, West Ham are losing. I can see us, you know, despite us saying, "Oh, what a great season it's been," we'll probably finish eleventh with performances like that. Yeah, I mean, this is a problem, isn't it? When you, when you're in that obscurity, you're not you're not um, you're not in any danger of going down, but you're not challenging anything higher. And I suppose I'm not it's not an excuse, but I suppose you could argue Leicester have one eye on a very important semi final. Now I don't I don't know if she's still around, but Ellie's been commenting throughout the match. Uh, so yeah. She's a Spurs fan. She could see if we could sort something out there that end. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know if the eye on that because I think that's a way into Europe for the Foxes. I'm not saying they're going to do it, I'll do it, but you know, never say never. They're in a position, they're in the best position you're going to get, barring being winning the thing to get there at least. Um, and it's cost us, Chris, because I feel that well, I feel all three goals. We're avoidable. We're going to talk about the elephant in the room, the, the, the cursed one, if if you will. The one that kind of commentators cursed it because just as I praised the official, who didn't actually have the worst game ever, actually had a pretty decent game. Um, But that's a foul on Mad Samantha in the championship. Definitely. The, 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 the striker just backed into cop. Unless I'm seeing something that didn't happen, Chris... She backed into the goalkeeper and then smashed it into a net with a defensive goalkeeper. How, how is that not a, 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 a free kick? The argument you could put forward is that goalkeepers are wrapped in cotton wool, they're too defended. But that's a, sec that's a separate argument. At the moment, as things stand, I don't see why that was not given. VAR gives it, I think, every day of the week and twice on a Sunday. Uh, but, you know, it, it was what it was. Um, I, I, it's, I, 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 don't, I don't see how it was not given, but look, you just have to get on with it, don't you? Yeah, you do. And that's something that Leicester probably failed to do for the next two goals, um, Chris, because... They didn't seem to be on with it, did they? They they they, they allowed Brighton to rattle their cage, um, and and Brighton then had that dominant dominant ten fifteen minute spell, Chris, and Leicester just couldn't get a foothold into it, and then talk about being the makers of your own downfall. Yes, the goal kick got to halfway, but it was a dreadful goal kick, and then. What happens, Chris? Because nobody seemed to react or respond to it. Brighton just simply played a ball, you know, back to our box, and and all of a sudden they were throwing goal and empty net. Like, like what? Yeah, what? It, was, it was it was too easy, wasn't it? 
you know, I mean, you know, cop came out, she committed herself. Uh, if you're going to come out like that, and I'm not just saying this, but if, you, if you're not going to get the ball, take the player. Because in that situation, as yeah. happened, you know, once she got past cop, she had an open net, didn't she? You know, so commit the foul, get sent off. Yes, all right, you probably, you know, but uh, then you've got to get another goalkeeper on. But, you know, we wouldn't have been any worse off, would we? No, I don't think so. Although, you you, you know, you could then say, well, yeah, but Leicester were a goal, but, you know, would, you know, with, you know, they would have still been level at that point and, and it would have been a different game. And then, and then Chris, obviously, you know, and then people might nitpick and have their, oh, it's not very sportman-like what, what teams do, but we do it in that situation. Brighton then proceeded to want to play out that last 20 minutes by doing nothing but have every player behind the ball. And and, and it looked like it was going to work, Chris, didn't it? Yeah, you can't really blame yeah. them. Yeah, you know, we, we would do the same. It's annoying as an opposition fan, uh, but... <laughs> Yeah, you know, you can say, oh, come on, blah, blah. But look, Brighton are doing what Brighton are going to do to win the game. And they they, they were obviously went on to win the game. Would Leicester have done the same? Of course we bloody would, you know. Yeah, and anyone who wants to sit on there and try and say we wouldn't, uh, you need to take your blue-tinted glasses off because we'd have done exactly the yeah. same in Brighton's situation. Yeah. Although saying that, Chris, we weren't given the chance to do that, were we? Because Peterman got Leicester back level with... Superb assist by the other Japanese international, Takadiri. Uh, and then before I could finish celebrating it, Chris, static defending, no movement, Brighton back in. Again, uh, avoidable, I felt, Chris. Yeah. Am I being too harsh on Leicester in that no, situation? No, 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 no. I mean, first of all, I, I, I was giggling to myself because I hadn't actually got your watch along up at that time. I was just doing some work for the, the other channel. Oh. And, <laughs> and um, uh, don't, <laughs> no. I was laughing because I'm thinking like, you will not have finished adding the name to your score, list of scorers. And I, you know, why is he still doing that? They've gone on and scored. That did make me, 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 me titter. Um, I thought it was Momika. Um, the, 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 has done the assist, but what a great assist it was. I mean, I'm thinking, like, why pass it out there? Because she had a player maybe in front of her, or she could have had a go, uh, but obviously it was the right decision. And Peterman, wow, but yeah, what, what a strike, what a strike. But what's one of the, you know, there's probably 10 main rules of football, and that is that when the opposition has just conceded a goal, that is when they're at the most dangerous. Yeah. Do not switch off when you have just scored a goal. We went for a cup of tea, didn't we? Cup of tea. I think we left the King Power and went to go and have a have a go at the rugby across the road or something because we were not in the stadium, Chris. And and yeah. the scores score line and the the time between the goals will tell you that. You know, not not even seven minutes between our goal and, and their equaliser. Whether it was a foul or not, I think it was. You think it was. I think anyone with a brain cell would have given it as a foul. But you know, and then and then look at that. You know, you know, six minutes between that and, and then taking the lead. And and then I'm being generous here because I might as well put Peterman. Peterman scored an eighty three, and then Turland scored an eighty three point two seconds into the game because that's how quick it changed up from 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 to. And you know, like Chris, you. It's so frustrating a game to lose because, OK, Brighton played well and had their chances as well, Leicester. And near the end of that game, I even said to myself that maybe a draw would have been a fair outcome, but both teams had an equal amount of, cha of, of good, clear chances and Brighton took more of theirs than obviously we did. But so many basic rules of football were lost upon Leicester, not switching on for the third goal, not being stronger in the box for, for sorry, for their for their third goal not concentrating for their second goal maybe if you want to say the reason it wasn't given too weak in the box for their equaliser three goals and for me Chris despite me giving credit to Brighton for their efforts today and and, 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 and fair play to them on getting the win they ultimately 
we deserve it because they put the ball in the net more times than we did and were more clinical. But three very avoidable goals. And whilst I agree with you, Chris, we're having a I mean that was a that was a very we were lucky with that offside. Uh and yeah. maybe I've not seen it from all angles, but on the first, you know, look, I I didn't didn't think there was anything wrong with it. But look, there was, but it could have been could have been four two. And I think, you know, um I, I I just think those are the sort of games that you need to be winning. And those are the sort of games that probably at the start of the season we would have won. Yeah. And that is a bad joke, Nate. I'm sorry. That no, is a bad joke. I only put it up for a little while so it didn't get much you, out. You know, you know why seagulls are called seagulls, don't you? Because they flew over the bay, they'd be called bagels. Oh, yours Thank is you. worse. How did you manage to... Your hey, sound I... is going as well, mate. Your sound is going as well. Well, uh, if it keeps going and stuff like that, unfortunately, I'll have to put this post-match to an end uh, mm. quickly. Because... I mean, I'm just looking at it. And look, I know you don't like stats. No, 20 shots to us, 12 to Brighton. Um, we had 60% possession. We had 150 more passes. We had um, 8% better pass accuracy. They got four yellow cards. We didn't get any. What That is a game that we should have won. No excuses, or we should have at least got, and I don't know who predicted a 2-2 at the start of the game, but we should have got at least that from the game. Yeah, well, we should have. And and this is maybe lessons learned for next season because mm. let's not take away from the fact that Leicester are having a, a, a great season. And I'd like to think that it's not going to suddenly fall apart and they'll pick up points here and there. But I do feel, Chris, if you look through their results they've actually had this season, we couldn't beat 10 men West Ham. Mm. We drew that one all. We haven't managed to see out or hold on to a draw or, or, or even win this game that we were in front of uh, at Brighton. Uh, and then silly little mistakes or something we need to iron out because it's all well and good going, going away to Manchester United and getting a draw. But like we always say, Chris, if you can't beat the teams in and around you, it's not good. And all them statistics look pretty, but we're not mm. talking about Leicester winning the game. You know, if we if if you're telling me we had twenty shots, twelve on target, and we got eight percent better pass, and we're winning three two, then great. The, the the stats match the performance. But whilst I'm not saying we had a bad performance, I mean game shows that because of how close the game was in, in terms of scoreline and the fact that we never stopped trying. There is some naivety in that camp that needs to be ironed out um, once the season comes to an end. Um, Look, 16 points is usually enough to keep you up anyway. And again, we've got a 10-point gap over Brighton, uh, Brighton, over Bristol. So that fear isn't there at all going into this final no. bit of the season. But warning towards next season, we switched off for all three of their goals. So we need to work on something on the training ground or, or maybe added an experienced player into that back line. I don't know, but something needs to be ready done for next season because we might not have the luxury, Chris, next season where a team that comes up from the championship struggles to get points on the board like Brighton. I, I keep saying Brighton, it's Bristol City. You know, it's because we're playing them. I, I don't know how you do these watch along. But you know, no, I, mean, I Chris, usually because... do, but I usually make the same mistake. <laughs> oh, so it's funny, that's how do I. You know, Bristol City, you know, I mean, Leicester were in that position, Chris. I think in their first season, they survived on 10 points or 8 points or something mm. like that. And then the season before, they survived on 12. And it was a little bit clearer because I think it was Birmingham went down uh, and they were they were a lot worse. Uh, no, it was Reading. It was Reading and, and, and before that, it was Birmingham, who, who obviously only got eight, seven or 8 points. Mm. So... The team that comes up usually struggles to hit double figures, but it doesn't mean that's always going to be the case. You'd imagine eventually these these teams that maybe yo-yo for a bit will start to get more of the financial benefits of playing a season or two in the WSL, and then mm. suddenly 16 points isn't going to be enough. Leicester, they're going to want to get ahead of the, the car, if you will, in that, in that sense, Chris. Next season, that's what they need to be roaring out and, and preparing on, that focus ability, Chris. Because the, the reverse fixture, Two up with ten minutes to go, drew it two two. 
because the mm. winning goal scorer scored two goals in the 82nd and 88th minute. It's something that Leicester need to take out of their game because it's happened too much too often this season. Yeah, indeed. I mean, I would have said, like, are we missing, and I said earlier, Willie Kirk, without going into sort of the, the ins and outs, but not having your manager there for, you know, a, a long spell, which it is now, how is that affecting it? But I don't, like you said, you know, when Willie Kirk was there, we were 2-0 up with, uh, and still only drew 2-2. Two, two. I, I just think at the moment, I think there's, I'm not saying that everything that's going on at the club's putting the, te the teams off, but it's bound to have an effect. But I just hope that they learn the lessons from these. Yeah, yeah. And again, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens later on in the line where Leicester are and, and what their situation is in mm. all aspects of it. But, Chris, um, look, this, this is obviously... You, you, you've been keeping an eye on a women's game for a while, but this is the first season that's really taken effect and, and taken it in. If, is that a game? And if that was your first viewing of women's football, would you say that was a very good spectacle for the women's game to, to have seen? If you were just a neutral or, or even, you know, like someone who's a Leicester fan was taking you to try and get your support Leicester, would you have been on, wow, well, that was actually a really good game of football. I'm going to start... Start I, going think, to games I think if you came and I mean that game from a neutral's point of view, I mean they said it on the commentary that that was probably the game of the weekend um, in, in the WSL. Uh, certainly the game earlier, apparently Liverpool Everton was a bit of a dire a dire bore uh, draw. But the problem is, so many people come to women's football from the men's game, and I get that. I get it. Um, you know, it's bound to, be, you know, it's, it's an obvious thing to happen. And what you got to, st and I found myself doing it in this game, is comparing these players to the Leicester City men's team, if you like, you know, and you're thinking like, wow, they should have got that under control. And wow, that was a bad, bad. but they're, they're not at that level. No. You, but for entertainment, if you watched that, I never. Do you remember that when we, we? I got into I got into the women's game generally from, like I say, the Euros, and there were some absolutely brilliant games in there. Would yeah. you see sort of a, a a team in the men's Euros this season losing eight nil? No, but you saw that in the women's thing. It was Norway, wasn't it? Um, but that's it, you know they are at that level. Um, but certainly as a as a neutral. As a neutral, as Nate said there, you know, it would be a great game. And I think you've just got to accept that you are watching. What you are not watching is, it's like I go down, I live in Paul. And when I first came here, I was what, I went down to, to I, I, I ended up working for Paul Town. And I used to get all the games because I used to go to get in free to work for them. And I could, you can't compare that. To, so it was just like the tenth tier of football to what I was used to seeing <laughs> watching Leicester. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, exactly. Certainly, if I was coming, yeah, I mean that was a great advert for the game. Uh, it was end to end. You couldn't switch off. Um, you know, Brighton went. Uh, you know, looked the better team, but Leicester um, had more of the ball in the first half. In the second half, and I've written down here. You know, in the second half, you know. Um, we started the second half like the first. We were just pressing all the time. We got the goal this time. And you're thinking, right, come on, Leicester. Go on and win it. Um, and then frailties appeared. It Did we deserve a draw? Probably. Probably 2-2 two, two would have been a fair draw. Um, mm. But, look, you know, if, if I lived in Leicester, would I go down and buy a ticket to go and watch that? Yes, I would. Yeah, and it's great. And Nate says it here. And I hope it's because of my wonderful, astute commentary that's helped you stay here as well, Nate. He says it's his first time tuning some women's good game. Looks. It's... You what? It's your good looks. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, even better now the camera stopped working. Uh, he says first time tuning um, to a women's game, and it's really good. I'll be tuning in again, Nate. That'd be great because I will be here again with them providing. Um, and even if I can't, even if it's audio that I have to listen to, I will do my best to bring you commentary through commentary, if that makes sense. So we will be doing regularly for then. And again, like Nate said, 
if nothing else, if you don't, if you take your um, men's game, women's game, off and look at it from our perspective as less fans, it's another team for us to support. And, mm. and so far, troubles off the field aside, they're all doing really well. The under 21s for the women's are smashing teams. They, they I think they are in a cup final themselves. The women's team, okay, today didn't go well, but they're mid table, they're safe, and they're in the semi final of the FA Cup. The men's side, obviously, top of the well, joint top of the league, goal difference, technically second, but again. All things are coming up Millhouse, as is, as he once said, um, uh, and it's and it's, it's just a wonderful thing. In, and you you take that mentality off of oh, it's women's football. This you know, it's just a team to support that plays for Leicester, and that's why we're doing what we do on this channel, isn't it, Chris? It is. It is. And who knows? That might be the only team we've got to support in a couple of months. Joking. Joking. <laughs> 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 riots, um, riots going on. But no, I mean, <laughs> hey, who knows? It might be the only one that gets on a European tour, Chris. They've got to get past Tottenham first, but well, who knows? Yes, who uh, knows? That's coming up in a couple of games. But look, I mean, it's disappointing. But the, if we sat here last season, we, you know, we, we would have said, we probably wouldn't even have got that, to be honest with you. So it's baby steps and it has to be baby steps. It certainly does. And and, and and just this, I'm going to use that to, to trail out for this this lovely show we've done today, mate. Baby steps is baby steps go. It is baby step returning with a bang, may I add. We did it. We braved out the watch along for this one because there was an mm. opportunity to do it. Um, and may I just say, you were scattered out throughout the show. But the fact that it's been a while since stuff come on here, to see your support was absolutely amazing. Nate Forever in the show was absolutely brilliant. And to those those few of you that added to their subscription count, it means a hell of a lot of you. It's gained, gained a couple of subscribers today during the watch along. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, and we may even have to organise a show with a potential Spurs ex-player and and, 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 and and her name was Ellie. And the if next we, game we play doesn't clash with Leicester men either. I know that's the worst thing. The only the only reason I will not do a women's watch long is if it ever clash with the men's time. Yes. So the next one but they don't clash with. So that's fantastic. I can do that as well for you. Uh, but Chris, just after I said an amazing thanks to everybody that's tuned in and shown support mm. to the channel. We're going to end things the way we always do. Uh, and can that I is... just, before we, before we end that... Oh, no, no, you can't. Sure. Yes, I can, because I can put Quite you out, in. remember? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Go on, then. Uh, I will give a shout-out to, to OTID TV one which you weren't going to ask me to, but I will do anyway. Uh, get over there for all the... the oh, men's... Chris, will you put a shout-out to OTID TV one please? <laughs> Oh God, the master and the apprentice. I jest, oh, yeah. I jest. Um, but yeah, get over there and check it. But what I do want to say is, uh, if you're doing nothing at eight o'clock tonight, put your TV on, get over to Talk TV. Uh, I'm not sure what the channels are on different things, but get over to Talk TV because it the Mark Saggers does a Sunday night football show or sports show in fairness, not just football, a Sunday night sports show. It's the only sports show on talk TV and uh, he does, he does a great show. He really does. Um, and uh, I was just looking, I thought I'd, um, I thought I'd retweeted it that said where it was. But anyway, from eight o'clock, they are looking at everything that is going on. Uh, with the show, there we go. With the uh, with the show tonight, it's on Sky Five Two Two, Virgin Six O Six, Freeview Two Three Seven, and FreeSat Two One Seven. Uh, Talk TV. Uh, it's Mark Sagers from seven PM till ten, but from eight to nine, we are going to be talking about FFP and PSR. We've got an ex EFL chairman on. We've got ex an ex-chairman of a football club on, and you got me. What more could you want? It's the perfect one to toi. Well, I'll probably out. take you out of the equation if you were to ask me, but that's just me just throwing shade at <laughs> there, Chris. <laughs> I know they are. the fans' version, apparently. <laughs> uh, well, there you are. Well, there you all go, guys and girls. Thank you very much for joining me and Chris, my co-host, along today. Uh, we will be back... Um, well, we'll be back on LCIE TV one. Um, or maybe not, maybe not because tomorrow at seven, 
tomorrow at 7 we'll be on our LTID TV1. But also, this is a quiz channel um, that I got so into the watch long I didn't really plug it. But there is a quiz coming soon. I'm waiting to hear back from Craig. But if I don't hear back from it soon, it will be our lovely Chris that's on it. It is the Football Pyramid game. Yeah, I've lured you in. Yeah, you're doing it. You just don't know it yet. Uh, uh, yeah, you just don't know it yet. Um, you're so only getting are... me on because it'll make you look good. Well, yeah, because I'm going to ask you how many times would Adley buy or offside just to get revenge <laughs> on you. Even though it's, a Leicester, it's a Leicester City quiz. I can't do that, but I might ask you how many times how you the acting by you blazed it over the bar. Um, but until then, we will be back for the quiz. So make sure if you like Leicester City and football quizzes and Leicester City LCFC, you have subscribed and like the button, uh, hit the like button. You've all done a tremendous job today in the support. And as always, it's good night from me. And it's good night from him. Okay, good night, guys. Take care. These videos are so dreamy. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to click the notification bell. This podcast is proud to be part of the TalkSport Fan Network. TalkSport. Powered by fans. That will conclude this evening's entertainment.